Yeah. I told you I was retiring. What? what? Wait, nah, hold up. We raced, you lost. Now you reneging? What happened to Bad Boys for Life? Yeah, for life. It's off. You died. What? What the hell are you talking about? You coded out, Mike, three times. Marcus, look. This motherfucker stole something from me. And I need it back. What did he take from you, Mike? You're still here. All he took from you was the legend. Bulletproof Mike. But I saw you on the ground bleeding. You're human, just like the rest of us. Yeah, his ass bleeds, too. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mike, you go out there for vengeance, you're going to get someone killed. Oh, we definitely bringing some smoke. That fool put holes in me. And you're filling them with hate, Mike. Look, you need to start thinking about your karma, man. This was a sign. A sign, yeah. A sign to turn up. So I'm supposed to bow down now, get this bitch a pass? Turn up? What are you, 20? You need to turn that shit off. You know, Mike, Rita called me every day you were in the hospital. There's something still there. A future. My future is haunting this motherfucker. Well- Welcome to the Swirly Nerd Podcast, episode 64, with your boy, the TV Guru 108. And you get the snowman. And the world is burning. Well, just America will. You could say the world is burning. Yeah, the world is burning. <laughs> I mean, all over the world, everybody doing something. Well, yeah, everybody's everybody, rising up. Everybody rising up. I mean, shit. Um, we're going to do something different. If this is your first time listening, we usually have like segments, um, but we're going to switch it up. We're going to do the topic first. Yeah, um, so all you guys who are a... Not even guess what. Um, who have been following us for a while, this is something different. Yeah, it is something real different. And we and we and this is this is essential what we're doing right now because we're seeing a lot of fake allies out here trying to act like they feeling what black people's going through. Um you see it everywhere. Newscasters saying we stand with black people. You see YouTube um talking about how we stand for black YouTube, we want black YouTube voices to be heard. And no, when you hear that they're basically acknowledging white supremacy. But, they're, they're basically saying, yeah, our platforms are white supremacist hub, and we know we're not letting you niggas talk on, on these platforms, but... Well, fuck you, but, pretty much. But we're going to let you speak today. You, you're going to be a trendy thing for the week, and then next week we'll be talking about the election. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is all bullshit, man, and I'm tired of this fake ally shit, man. This is the most infuriating shit I've had. I've, had to sit here and listen to. I've been festering all goddamn week <laughs> so we could talk about this. Um, yeah, because I've been pissed off all these fake ass uh, out the world works. And do you, can we talk about this person or we gotta be subtle? Uh, let's be subtle. We don't have to, we don't have to say we don't have to say names. We don't, we don't need to say <laughs> names. But how about this? If you want to know who we're talking about, they'll be down in the description below. I'll put um, this the dude we talking about. <laughs> and. Are you going to uh, upload the receipts that we would... Oh, we don't need receipts. <laughs> well, but, well, people... Are yeah, gonna... I mean, this, he ain't the reason for the bullshit. That, that's not make it about that nigga. Let's make it about <laughs> the, a black man being killed. Fuck that nigga. Right. <laughs> shit, you know that nigga. It ain't about that nigga he, when, because we look like that. Yeah, <laughs> Fuck all that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Even though this person has been on using this dude's death to get clout, despite the fact he never talked about racism to now, but I guess you know, everybody realizing... That their business is a risk, and black people, we have the power to like pretty much shut down the economy. Mm-hmm. Everybody's being ambitious. Mm-hmm. Like we can, we can literally get on cold overnight and just wipe this whole country out and put in a new, a new like not name, but like I, we can put in a whole new rule for America, mm-hmm. and that's what got the spook and shook. Mm-hmm. But um, everybody's being pulled back now because no, they're. Backs up against the walls. Yeah, I mean, I man, I, I think it's pretty funny that all these motherfuckers think that a little bit of kindness is gonna keep motherfuckers from rising up. I mean, everybody, everybody hip to the game now, and it's, it's sort of funny seeing all these damn racist ass white people come out and put that. Uh, we stand with black people, we stand with this, we stand with that. Like, that—that that is like the most 
Oh my god, the most frustrating shit. Cause I it's so passive aggressive. It's so fake, man. It's fake as fuck. And if y'all was really shit, if y'all was really about that race, y'all would have talked about the shit ten years ago. Like everybody else, like Jason Black, Professor Pack Truth, Tariq Nashi. But y'all call us fucking hotel. All you motherfuckers who call us hotel, why you guys cry now? Why are you saying that shit now? No, motherfuckers, like be on that shit now. Stand on, stand on your world word. Don't change up because now it's you, the, you, 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 you can get touched. Right. You, or it's trendy. You'll get a couple of likes. Because I, I, I see that shit. I see like these fucking like websites and shit like that like talk about black issues and stuff. Uh, foundational black American issues. And it's like Oh my God, they are so brave. Oh, even those like whack ass YouTubers, like oh my God, they're you, you man, you 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 doing something deep, man. I know you won't talk about it, man, but you deep for doing this. What? What? Get the fuck out of here! All this person do is talk about fucking Mortal Kombat, all oh, fucking uh... and Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> Sailor Moon, Star Wars, Fire <laughs> Emblem. That's all they talk about. All because they Dragon Chris. They do one goddamn <laughs> acknowledgement or some shit. You fucking nigga with, nurse. With, with no not God, a, with, not, with no facts and no anything, they they, they they still questioning the death of. And we talking about the George Floyd stuff, but it's it's other it's other YouTubes before even George Floyd shit that I peeped that like they said little. They're on the fence. That they they say like some weird shit about like uh, about Mike Brown or like the Trayvon stuff. Say it, that Mike Brown's a thug off one bullshit um, security security footage that was like from. Three years prior to the incident, mm-hmm. y'all gonna call that motherfucker a thug. Y'all gonna call him a thug. But now, since things are getting real, y'all wanna take that shit back. No, fuck you. You ain't shit. Mm-hmm. I hope you get gas by the police like you fucking uh, look the, the licks for. I mean that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's also, um, it was another thing that happened to uh, me and Yugi. We've been conversating with this dude on um, YouTube. Um, uh, this guy And he hit us About a blue uh, What was it Two weeks ago Yeah Oh no A week ago Two weeks ago A week ago He hit us up Out of the blue We heard from the dude For a long time Since uh, February 12th 24th that's, that's, that's the timeline Because we had emailed him About doing a uh, Promotion Since he was Offering promotions mm-hmm. So He had hit us up About Race relations in America Yes Out of nowhere Out of nowhere and we 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 set up for an interview for a long time, and they and the person never like was tr- was busy was always saying they busy they sick or going out of town. We just we was always like okay that's cool. But then out of nowhere you hit us up. We didn't hit them up. You, you hit us up asking about race relations, and then literally the next day you make a video about about that that same subject, and we like what the fuck? Like was you trying to like take our uh, take our uh, ideals? <laughs> And make it so like it was your world, and it makes it bad. We we talked so radical. Um, <laughs> well, I did because I emailed the guy, but I I was like, no, nah, this, this is a white supremacist system where we got these uh, wannabe white supremacists like Latinos and like uh, Asians and uh, Middle Easterns who think yeah, they, they're things. honorary whites and they're gonna get at people. I said Latinos, oh. Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, and he said none of that shit. He was acting like a goddamn, um, well, it was a murder, but we, we don't know what was really going on. And like, this guy forgot the part where Derek used to work with George, so he doesn't know this could be premeditated. Mm-hmm. But we can assume that he ran with the story like he always did for his other stuff, mm-hmm. which I'm not going to mention. Mm-hmm. And just screw out bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because he wants to be first. Yes. He wants to be cool. He wants yes. to be trendy. How the how fucking dare you use a death of a black man mm-hmm. to be fucking trendy? You trying to get clout. Trying to get fucking clout. And we we told that nigga that we was like, um, we, not nigga. We we told that dude that, and he was like, oh man, you we I'm not trying to do none of that. You guys are just mad because we I won't do an interview with you. I'm like, no, nah, I don't give a shit about no interview, yeah, dude. We don't, I mean, we don't need you. Yes, got people. Line of, like we actually got like you got people who actually read and do, but we also still speak to them. I mean, once around to have that connection, mm-hmm. and they're on code with us. What I mean, they know it's a system of white supremacy, and they will acknowledge it. I'm like, this mm-hmm. is the person. 
Yeah, but this person and other YouTubers on YouTube, they're not going to speak up for real, for real. They'll put the little post, um, I stand with black people, but they're not going to talk about white supremacy because most of they motherfuckers, they get their bread from white supremacists. <laughs> All these YouTubers, they fans are white supremacists. Shit, come on now. These motherfuckers are talking that race shit. They're going to see their they numbers go down. Yeah. They're going to start going hard on them on Reddit. They might get doxxed, nigga. That's what's going to happen to these motherfuckers on YouTube. That's why they only put... We stand with black people yep. and LBGT community. I've been saying that lately too. They're like they sneaking in LBGTQ under the like I literally see a Lucy. I'm standing with black people, and then under it say and the LBGT community. You're like, what the hell is this? Like y'all think y'all motherfucking slick? Like no nah, man, anybody for the uh, no nah. like ain't no nothing. It's nothing on the books ever about hating on gay people. They ain't nothing on the books would say um, a gay water fountain, straight water fountain. Ain't no, no no gays in the fucking restaurant. Straight, <laughs> straight only. You know, ain't no motherfucking no gays in my school. <laughs> ain't no on the D's that say we don't sell the homosexuals. Well, come on now, now y'all can try to throw some Bible bullshit, but hey, that's a white man shit. He made that shit. <laughs> don't blame us. Everything y'all trying to throw at motherfucking black folks is white people who started that shit. It was white people who fucking um uh, had women not have the rights to vote. It was white fucking people who was keeping motherfucking um 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 uh, black people from doing whatever the hell they wanted to do. Don't don't ever try to act like it was just some. All men, all all this type of one. Get the fuck out of here! No, uh-uh. fuck out of here! No, it's not us. But no, that that shit fucking kills me, man. And I, I it, that shit fucked me. And then Nintendo talking about um, we gonna stand up for uh, uh, uh we stand for black people. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like oh, y'all motherfuckers shit. gonna have a single black character Listen. in your goddamn roster of fucking Nintendo characters. And, 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 yeah, we can, we can say whatever y'all want to say, these imaginary ass characters and shit, but you ain't got a single dark skin, the only dark skin character in Nintendo is Sheik. Ga- she- no, and, Ga- you mean Ganondorf? Well, Sheik is uh, sometimes dark, depicted dark. Yeah. Um, and, and, ain't no Sheik and Zelda who is a blind her like, right, bitch? Mm-hmm. Um, you, know what, you know what I find funny about Nintendo is how all po black? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know you guys talk about this, but Smash Brothers Ultimate has this, you know, spirit board shit. So mm-hmm. one spirit board had Donkey Kong, and this person who's, who's uh, possessing Donkey Kong is Mr. Sandman, mm-hmm. a black boxer. Mm-hmm. Now, you know how white people call us monkeys. Mm-hmm. How the fuck you have Mr. Sandman representing a monkey? A uh, black man. I mean, and a lot of people say, oh, well, they Japanese, they don't know nothing about race. Yes, the fuck yes, they, they do. do. Why is fucking Link blonde hair and blue eye? And he, this is a Japanese ass made game. Oh, it's because of European. European. So why is Japanese motherfuckers talking about you, Europe? You, <laughs> but they ain't never brought up anything about Africa. But nope. they. But everybody's supposed to be multicultural and love every fucking um c- country and shit. But you never see no African shit in no video game ever. Ever. Except you know what's Resident Resident Evil Five or, when there's Africa know, killing zombies. Yeah. <laughs> ain't that some shit? This, I'm going back to uh, Nintendo. So. Nintendo, through Square, had a RPG based off of Huckleberry Finn. Mm-hmm. The reason why they came to America is because there was a character in blackface. Mm-hmm. It was like a white character in blackface or black character we know with that really racist um, feature, you know, big eyes, really dark skin, bug eyes. Mm-hmm. But Nintendo has a nerve to say, you know, they're for black people. Mm-hmm. And you guys want, and you guys think I'm bullshitting. I will have a link. I would have a uh, source to that picture below where they sold the character in blackface or just a black character with big lips and shit. Well, everything we're bringing up will be down in the description below. And also, that picture will be on our Facebook page at Swarthy Nerd. Uh, Facebook for Swarthy Nerd. <laughs> but yeah. Now I got, I'm going on these fucking voice actors I've been watching, I mean, seeing on YouTube also talk about, you no. Know, oh, let's uh, give black people and people of color roles. Mm-hmm. They don't want to say black. So they say, oh, what about black and brown voice actors get a chance to voice black and brown characters? Mm-hmm. Or black and Asian. Mm-hmm. They don't want to say black because they don't get docs or they don't want to fucking lose a job in Funimation or country or whatever the fuck is, is doing the voice, actor, voice acting shit now. You guys are so fucking fake. Like, <laughs> it's so amazing how this crisis has unveiled people's fears. Mm-hmm. How 
what we've been telling y'all motherfuckers for years like these people these people don't give a fuck about you they don't give a fuck about themselves yep and they using you um, they, well we're going we're gonna sign voices to black artists come on our YouTube channel what the fuck so instead of you know <laughs> <laughs> actually you know pushing our shit up you want us to come to your bullshit and be under your scrutiny because you ain't gonna ask no real questions. You yeah. just gonna just tell me how you feel and they're gonna let you rant for 30 minutes about bullshit, about nothing because you, cause you're a safe Negro. They ain't gonna have you talking about white spring. I bet money ain't not a single person who they show, um, talking about, so tell me how you feel, talking about said white supremacy not once. I bet money. I can tell you right now. Ain't none of them damn YouTubers or anybody in it. Cause I, I, I see it on my, my subscription because I, I, I follow a lot of stuff on YouTube like uh, the late night talk show shows and news and all that stuff and i see a lot of that shit i'm like what the fuck what the fuck this actor has to say about white supremacy in hollywood nigga you ain't gonna say shit yeah. only person who says this was john biega but i think he was low-key just trying to get some clout um because <laughs> all that cooney he was doing in star wars god damn nigga shit. fucking his eyes like wait wait, wait! you yeah. all fucking black man worry about a white man white no, woman white bitch <laughs> excuse me white cunt <laughs> Jesus Christ! What she do? No, I'm just, I'm just, like I say, this whole this whole past few days, like we got me on your show. I'm just now I'm listening my anger towards just everybody. I feel, you, I feel, you, I feel. You. Same or same. It's something gets it's something gets hit by my shrapnel, by some shrapnel from a good egg. Shrapnel, shrapnel. <laughs> You should have got. You should have just dug and got my ring. Oh yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, man. But yeah, but I, I give him props for that shit. Even though he, even though I, he, he, he sort of um, was trying to get a way out by saying, uh, uh, I might, I might not be able to work in Hollywood again. To basically tell everybody, everybody on Twitter and and Facebook to come out and say, we, we'll work with you. We'll work with you to make sure he get a job. Still, yeah. <laughs> like he making sure he get a job before he say some shit. <laughs> you, you saw how he was uh, crying too. Doing the pictures? Uh, no, I ain't seen no crying in pictures. I just yeah. saw the the yelling. He had a, he had a tear jar. Like, do he was performing this morning? I mean, I, shit, I don't know how he was dressed. I was like, shit, I don't know if he was uh, woke up in the morning. Like, okay, this is my uh, my radical gear. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, he probably quoting in the mirror. Um, and I'm gonna get you. <laughs> He's probably quoting his speech and shit. His writers from fucking. Uh, <laughs> from in one of them British movies he's in. Fucking gave him a couple of. Uh, uh, words and shit. You know, give me like a um, pep talk. Not the undercut. <laughs> uh, not the undercut. AV for real. I just, I'm just fucking bullshitting. Yeah, but um, like, but we got a que- we got a question. Any type of celebrity who speak up because these motherfuckers could be just um trying, trying to look, network tr- trying trying to look good on the, on the right side of history when the shit all fall when the, when shit does rise back up or fall or whatever. Um, be like, oh shit! You remember John Boy? He was down, man. You remember um, back last year? People gonna be saying that mm-hmm. shit. So that's all they doing. That's what I see. Um, I'm not saying be negative or nothing like that, but try to look at both sides of it. Um, just try, try to look and see, because sometimes people be on that bullshit, um, acting like they pro black, but they really ain't. Like, I think it's funny. And now I'm saying like the the black power fist, but you got the uh, LBGTQ colors in the back. I'm like, you slick motherfuckers. Facebook quickly or Twitter quickly made that little thing, you know, because they make these little filters up real quick. I'm like, y'all slick as a motherfucker. It's not about LGBTQ. It's about who, who, black people and black people warning. If it's any white people listening to this podcast. <laughs> That, this ain't no about no LGBTQ fucking nothing. Ain't like I just said earlier. It was no laws on the books about no fucking gay shit. You can only say what the sodomy rule, and but people know what sod- sodomy ain't just dick in the ass. Sodomy is anything that ain't the pussy. <laughs> so your girlfriend can your hand job. It can be considered sodomy. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so you can say your girlfriend sod- sodomized me. Yeah. <laughs> you got people, more- <laughs> people just people just think asshole because yeah. that's the. That's what's the or turning up to to vagina hands? Um, no, a lot of people think ass, but uh, uh, hands. Jesus, you went to hands. This nigga hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, but I think it's just, oh, man, it's just man. All this in my head. I'm just my, my I'm in a headache, nigga. It was straight up thinking about all the shit that I saw on like Facebook with like people getting upset because of some broken fucking buildings. Y'all getting upset because they breaking a couple of windows, breaking the stores. Fuck those stores. 
Them stores especially ain't the big, shit. Especially the big business that's corporate. Your fucking neighborhood like fucking Baghdad and your fucking ass is tripping over a fucking corporation Store. who has insurance. You know how much you, you know how they got insurance? Because the next day they was, was able to buy um some wood to be put on their goddamn motherfucking property. That's how you know they ready, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. There ain't some shit you can just call up and do. What the fuck? You gotta fucking have money set aside for that shit. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> The fuck they got whole wood on that shit, man. Get out of here. Fuck them damn business. Keep fucking looting. Fuck them. Fuck, fuck it. Fuck. Tomorrow. But they, they murder innocent people. Hey, cash gonna be casualties in this war. Hey. Got, <laughs> stay the fuck at home because you don't even know who the fuck even doing this shit if you don't ain't about it. Yeah, that's like motherfuckers to me go out and protest. Like, no, I don't know who the fuck you guys are hanging out with. Those could be agents. I get caught up with some sort of Asian shit because y'all want to be Instagram famous off yeah. somebody else's death. The fuck? fuck you Unless you really 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 about it You need to be around Some real riders That you know Not some niggas Y'all uh, in a Facebook group And y'all gonna meet up At this certain location Cause that's how you get caught up Cause these niggas Is looking at Facebook I swear to God uh, Me and Yuki's working on Our next episode Um I ain't gonna say the name yet Um We working on Another episode We looking up Um, um White supremacists And I swear to God The people I looked up That shit start popping up On my Facebook feed Nigga I swear to God, like, uh, listen to this person's podcast. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm, I, I ain't gonna try to listen to fucking Jordan P- Peterson. Fuck you. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, oh my God, this shit is ridiculous. That's why I hate Facebook. I hate Facebook for that. Because they just, boy, they, they just don't, 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 man. Stay the fuck off that shit, man. <laughs> well, even though you can mess with Swear the Nerd at Facebook.com. <laughs> um, don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> stick, stick to our website. Our website is the best place to be. Fuck YouTube, uh, iTunes, all that shit. Our website is going to be standing stronger than any other fucking platform. Because uh, next episode might get us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> off those platforms. Um, but, um, but yeah. It's just this fake ally shit, man. And that, uh, that's why we named the episode that. Because, like, that email pushed us to push me over the edge with dude with the whole um so what you it's this is crazy times huh what the fuck yeah. that's literally what the dude said i ain't talked heard from this dude for over a month because i'm about business don't fucking tell me you for to do some shit and don't do it you gotta be a man of your motherfucking word be a man of your goddamn word if you say you're gonna fucking talk up talk to a person or do anything if someone follow through right fo- yeah follow fucking through don't sit there and act like Oh well, I, I said I might do it. Uh, oh, okay. Now you use. Now you sound like a little bitch. <laughs> you sound like a little hoe. No offense to women. You sound like a little hoe. <laughs> fucking to my. Oh well, I, I might do it. You know, I've been sick. Uh, meanwhile, this person been posting over a hundred plus fucking videos on fucking YouTube. Okay, nigga, you been. And he just dropped a video to you about racism. <laughs> Literally modern day shit. I'm like, okay. All right. Uh, and then this this fucked up part. So we actually hit the dude up. Um, earlier in the year, and we wanted to talk about um, well, he wanted to talk about race and shit, but I said we could talk about whatever. And he was like, "Oh, well, COVID is real crazy right now, so let's not talk." But then George Floyd shit happened. Hey, um, I'm set to talk to you. That I, I want to see justice. I'm ready to talk about it in this month. Um, after the trial and shit, I'm like, "Nigga, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> nigga." We ain't your goddamn um black um, friends, <laughs> yo, your, your black um, um your black uh, uh dog whispers, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> the Negro whisper, as Tariq say, <laughs> like we ain't that shit, nigga. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Yeah, he got super mad when we um. Told him that. Yeah, because he not used to motherfuckers G checking them and telling them like, "What the fuck, dude? Like, nobody give a fuck how many subscribers you got, nigga. Subscribers don't mean shit. Take those subscribers to the bank, straight up, nigga. <laughs> or to the streets, <laughs> nigga. Them niggas ain't gonna do shit. As soon as you fucking deviate from anything else, they gonna like, "Yeah, hey, well, fuck this shit. Hey, fuck that. <laughs> I'm used to you talking about Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, fuck out of here. I used to, just, I used to you talk about Metal Solid. I don't want to um, hear about this real shit. Right. I want to hear about the escapism. Yeah, and that's what we've been talking about for, for the longest. But that's actually what Yuki's topic was. Oh, uh, was it last year? Escapism. Yeah. Go back to the episode. Check it out. Audio might not be so so great, but <laughs> <laughs> we but, still use it on USB mic um, into a computer. Now I'm um, using a- actual shit. <laughs> actual shit. <laughs> um. But it's, that's, I still think the audio's good. I mean, yeah. people might knock our earlier episodes audio-wise, but I can still... Me, personally, I can hear it. <laughs> Shit, I like it. Um, Sorry. But yeah, 
Man, but that, that shit fucks me up, man. That shit fucked me up this week. It's just hearing that shit. People talk about that. Like, what the hell are you even talking about? Like, you ain't fucking with no black people. You ain't even got no black people in your damn crew. And I'm talking about... Uh, I'm, like, I, grassroots black people. I, I'm, people I, I'm not, yeah, that too. And also, I'm talking about, like, these... YouTube conglomerates like fucking Funhouse and Rooster Teeth and fucking kind of funny and fucking um uh what was the the honest trailer people um all these uh, all these fucking major like conglomerate fucking YouTubers which these ain't YouTubers these are niggas who own by corporations who pump out videos weekly they, they, that's the reason why they can do that shit. <laughs> and they get a million views, nigga. They, they got corporations who push that shit, nigga. They clicked in with YouTube. <laughs> shit. The fuck? They got fucking um, marketing uh, teams and all type of shit. Like, these ain't YouTubers no more. These are fucking TV shows <laughs> just produced <laughs> by. Right. The fuck? And they got the, a whole production team. How, how does a YouTuber have a production team? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, some, a YouTuber who's like, I, it's like, 25 through 35. Right. That is goofy. Yeah. Like, you, that, that's not YouTube. That's corporate. corporate too. Hey, ooh. High five on that. Corporate too. Straight up. It really is. Um, and, and, and once again, we are not YouTubers. We are podcasters. And Yuki th- does his blog and stuff. <laughs> but um, we are podcasters before anything. We ain't no YouTubers. We not, we not no TikTokers. What the fuck y'all... Instagrammers. So we ain't none of that shit. We are just some podcasters who drop an episode every Tuesday to enlighten other black nerds. We actually own our name. We know how to big a corporation to keep our names. <laughs> shit, over man. But people kill me though. That like I know I keep saying, oh my God, it kills me. It really does kill me because it's like all this fake bullshit is all gonna like be gone within like two weeks, man. Like like right now, um, like like la- like last week's episode, a lot of people kept was saying in our comments, um, like damn, I thought y'all was gonna talk about what's going on. I'm like, man, we pre we pre recorded this stuff. I mean, <laughs> shit, we was set, we put two episodes in the bank. I mean, like, shit, we we, we won't expect that shit. Like we, you say you pre record our episodes about either a week or three days before they be posted on the website. So if we don't get any recent news, that's why. All right. Like right now, when you're listening to it, we recorded this um, the previous the, the 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 that this sat the Saturday of that two, not of last week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the Saturday prior to this coming Thursday versus today. Right, you missed it. The day of the release. So by the time this drops, we might get some. Well, not might. We are gonna get new information about the case mm-hmm. and anything else. There right. might be shit for all we know. After we get done today, there might be a bomb drop by some police officer in a black neighborhood. You or said a bomb. <laughs> yeah, I mean they did in Philly back in on oh, their days. So why not now? Right. To suppress the uprising, right. or somebody might say fuck it and say I'm gonna pop the wish off now. Go to a protest with a bomb strapped to the chest and while the cops are kneeling to taunt everybody, they're gonna say they're gonna, they're gonna blow the cops up. Right. So, do not get mad at us for not speaking on super recent happenings on Tuesday. And it is not our fucking um, job <laughs> to tell you what's going on. You should be informing your goddamn self. No. Don't rely on like a Tariq or Jason Black or another than you us, should be because you, you might get information wrong. Um, not even that. You, you need to be on your. You mean doing your due diligence. Don't be a scary motherfucker saying I don't want to watch the news because that's owned by white supremacists. Yeah, you should be studying that shit. That's why it's called chess. Ain't reason. nobody saying keep the shit in your mind. <laughs> we just saying uh, let it come through for a second and let it out. But um, take note of what's going on in this goddamn world. Don't be blah blah uh, boxed out. All you get your information is from is from this podcast or Tariq or Jason. You should you should want to seek out so you can see the how they find the news articles and all that shit. How you think they find it? Ain't because they listen to each other. They listen to other shit other too. <laughs> the fuck? Y'all, you can't just focus on those those people. Yes, the new black media is great. But um, you also want to look look at other media so y'all can bring it back so y'all can also share that information. Like, oh shit! Well, in in Florida, they were saying this on on this news channel. You can bring that back. <laughs> that share the information and then apply the shit. Now, I'm not saying nothing wrong with the blood new black media. Get your information from there, but also understand they get their information from other places too. Shit. <laughs> um, but yeah. 
But this fake ally shit is it's going it's going to be over about probably next week. Yeah, yes. I, I was I would think next week these motherfuckers gone. And this gonna be about LGBTQ. Mm-hmm. Well, I watch some gay person gonna get hit by a car <laughs> or some shit, and they gonna say, "See, it was hatred towards this gay trans black uh, <laughs> hermaphrodite <laughs> person." And watch all the white LBT, LBTG. And that's gonna be the story. And then Nick's gonna be like, oh, "That's fucked up, man. It's about black folks." And I'm like, "Oh, y'all homophobic for not wanting to focus on gay issues right now. We did y'all already. Watch, mm-hmm. watch it happen. Watch it fucking happen." <laughs> shit to, hey. all you, um, to all you celebrities on this fake shit y'all better not y'all better shut the fuck up because like we could say earlier this is this will come out 10 years from now and people will ask you why you not right now you were right now you know 10 years ago mm-hmm. like Bernie Sanders he was a writer quote unquote for Dr. King mm-hmm. and yet he refused to give black people reparations he was like and and, and the proof now with reparations is you can get it. They, anybody, if anybody says it's not possible to get reparations, just tell them COVID-19. The COVID checks. Literally. They, all they needed was a fucking rounding account number. <laughs> <laughs> and they could send you that goddamn money. So get the fuck out of here. And all you got to do is well, and you, and put your social security card. You, and your social security is connected to your race. So boom. And all you got to do if you need some DNA... If niggas want to give up their DNA to find out their lineage, which I don't trust because these motherfuckers say, well, you don't even come from um, here. You're from. They'll, from. they'll, they'll say every, um, <laughs> over, ni- over 99 blacks in America ain't even really originally from here. So actually, nah, I don't trust that DNA yeah. shit with them. They're going to clone. Yeah. They're going to make it clone. I mean, fuck that shit. Yeah, they're going to pull uh, the fucking um, Us, uh, Jordan Peele movie, Us. Shit going to have tethers, nigga, straight up. Hey, I mean, that was what they was talking about. But um, oh, hell yeah. People gotta get the fuck, uh, wake the fuck up though, straight up, and not just be only focused on this bullshit. Cause I'm telling you, when they start talking about gay shit, y'all gonna be like, what the fuck? Cause they're doing it right now, and I'm seeing it. And I'm seeing like white people doing it. I'm like, oh shit, they, they already pivoting, and we ain't even, um, we ain't even know. Uh, yeah, about, two weeks out. Shit. Talk about um, Stonewall. <laughs> shit. Like, don't use, don't use that shit to, to, Lean towards LBGG shit. Stone, oh man, no, no, man like Stone was uh, like Stone was, was about. It was a good man because it was a black. Whatever that person was, <laughs> they didn't like it because it was black, not because he was. They was a tranny. Mm-hmm. It was because he was he she it. Mm-hmm. That thing that Masachi was black, not because it was a fag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ross did not say that. Well, well, because mm-hmm. anything come out. But no, I was more. Hold on, I, I wasn't saying this was Stonewall. It's just mostly gay people feel like they're being um, treated wrong, but they think treated wrong is name calling. Yeah, ain't, ain't and an occasional ass, an, an, an occasional ass whooping. Man, okay, you occasional ass whooping, but it's mostly because it's an ignorant motherfucker. Which you can't, hey man, you can't, you can't fucking <laughs> say that's the equivalent to fucking uh, systematic white supremacy. supremacy. Get the fuck out of here. Ain't you know, nobody systematically downing gays. Yeah, because they won't have gay characters in movies. No, that's because that's not normal. Okay, I gotta be, okay, people gonna hate me for this, and this TV guru is saying this shit, <laughs> but the epitome, if you guys say anything is normal, it's heterosexuality. That's normal as fuck. We wanna say anything baseline, what's normal, Fucking a woman, a man and a woman fuck is the most normal shit ever. You know why? Because that's how you make humanity. That's normal. Don't try to fucking act like nothing else is. Don't try to make being straight some fucking weirdo shit. Like something wrong with a straight person. What? You only fuck a woman? Yes. Yes, I only fuck women. What the fuck? I don't like dicks up my ass. I don't like dildos. I don't like toys. I don't like none of that shit. <laughs> the fuck? I like a woman. A grown woman, preferably. <laughs> the fuck? the fuck out of here. People be fucking killing me with that shit. No, man. Ain't nobody hating on you motherfuckers. But get the fuck out of here. You, that's, that's why you got to be careful saying civil rights and all that shit. You got to say black issues, foundational black American issues. You got to keep saying and Don't even say black because then it can slide in fucking Middle East, not Middle Easterns, um, Africans and shit from Africa. Fuck that. Africans from Africa. I hope they from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it for um, Russia. <laughs> Africans from Russia. For, uh, yeah, for real. Africans from Russia. Yeah, for real. <laughs> um, but, fuck yeah. God. 
But we seriously got to be some stay on cold. So any black nerds listening, drop this nerdy shit. Use your platform to talk about black nerd empowerment. Don't be scared, man. You might be called what, what you could just earlier, a whole tip or fucking race baiter. You might be called all type of shit. But stand your fucking ground, dude. And I'm telling you, make that the new normal. We don't need our next generation of nerds being coons. I'm tired of this coon shit in the fucking nerd community, especially about black dudes. It's fucking sickening. It's insane, like all because y'all want some white pussy, all because you want somebody cosplaying ass, Selvina suck your dick. The fuck, you want some Asian girl who ain't gonna fuck with you because she Asian, and Asians don't never for real jump out of the fucking um, Asian pool unless it's a white person. Mm-hmm. You'll never see an Asian with a Mexican. <laughs> you never see no shit like that Get the fuck out of here You never do The fuck So you dreaming and fantasizing Get get real no, get, get real Get black nigga Manly is not gonna suck your dick I'm sorry <laughs> The fuck Unless she's do, doing some fetish shit I can see Don't suck your dick She gonna go back to her, her people And call you a nigger no. Or hard. And yeah I sucked this dick And it was tiny as hell it's, <laughs> it's not true Blacks have the tiniest penises It's it Your dumb ass You don't even get it you thinking, no, she fuck with me. No, she no. don't. She don't fuck with you, nigga. You just a fucking fetish. Get over it. God damn. And I, I, I'm, I'll give more props to motherfuckers who know they're the fetish and they fuck the motherfucker and keep moving. Mm-hmm. The fuck? <laughs> you dumb motherfuckers sitting here wanting to fucking cuff these motherfucking women. Cuff these goddamn racist white girls. I still, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm on the same level. I think black people should stay with other black fucking motherfucking people. For real. For real. I, love is love, but try to fuck with a black person first. Yes. Fuck out of here. A lot of people don't even know. Michelle Obama was Obama's first black girlfriend. <laughs> that was the first black, first and last black girlfriend. <laughs> 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 the fuck? That nigga ain't never fuck with fucking black people. And y'all think this nigga for us. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm tired of white people topping an attitude when we say we. They hate when you didn't do anything. No, as a collective black people do, because you know why? Because we spiritually, we spiritual type people. Unlike you white people who think every man for himself, uh, uh, take everything and kill everybody else. We don't think like that. <laughs> the fuck? We think it's a fucking group. Now, they do, they, do, they do think on a group on a code of like a religion of white supremacy, but they ain't on no sticking together shit as you see right now with this riot and shit. <laughs> you see how the white people are still up between groups that you got the anti fascist, the fascist. Mm-hmm. Pro police, anti police. Y'all yeah. white people are fucking spell. Yeah, like a motherfucker. Y'all killing and cutting, throwing each other because they like shit. We don't know what to do. You know, you know what could happen while y'all white people are killing each other. A few sort of girls. One, a whole another country like China or Russia could just fucking blow us up with some bombs, and now we're fucked up because y'all want to kill each other. We got no resources. We got no resources. Resources to. Fend off a outsider attack. Two, why you why you white people still find each other? Black people all over America can get on cold. They be like, look, why these guys, why these white folks are tired from killing each other? Let's just ambush them and kill them. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't think, y'all don't think like that. Y'all don't think long term. And people probably listening. Like, so what's the solution? It's called making shit equal. Stop fucking bullshitting. We don't, we don't want to be um a lot of the people. Sp- Speak on the fucking separation and all that shit. We just want the shit equal. Make it shit equal. But you're not going to make that shit equal because then you know it'll be nothing but niggas at the top. Because that's all it is. That's why you don't see a lot of black people in these corporate places and, and at the high, in the high ups and billionaire black people because they're deliberately not <laughs> set up to rise up unless you're vetted being a coon or some type of shit. It's the reason why. I mean, you got 50 Cent out here um, acting like he for black people, but no, this dude just got beef for fucking Oprah, dude. Like, a lot of people just don't get that. He's not for black people. He just, like, when he going in on Oprah, no, he got a beef for her. He been beef for her for fucking years. Y'all just, now he looks cool because everybody hate on Oprah now. Oprah hating on Oprah is the cool thing to do. You guys forgot that 50 Cent. Niggas late. You guys forgot that 50 Cent is best buzz for uh, Takashi 6 9 Man, right. He found the nigga. And also, um... People who big up that fucking TV show, man, that he produced, that For Life show. I said it when it first started. I'm going to say it here, right here, in just in case no one listened to that episode. That who wants, to, who wants a hero who's fucking in jail? He wins a case, but he gets right back in jail. What the fuck? 
That's backwards. What, what, what type of shit are you trying to project in people's mind? And this is on ABC, Disney, the, the mouse. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse sending black people to prison. What the fuck type of shit? I'm a, I'm a lawyer, but um, put the cuffs back on me. What, what the fuck type of shit is that? I don't want my freedom. What the fuck type of shit? What the fuck type of shit is that? Man, get the fuck out of here. Motherfuckers, boy. They be praising the wrong shit. <laughs> and, and they wonder why we're in a situation now where everything just exploded because y'all want to be have titles because you feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. Not actually work for the titles. Mm-hmm. Want to be a fucking consumer and actually fucking building your shit instead of look, looking at the bright side. Hey, that, that, that Target, they fucked up. Hey, now maybe we can get a black business there now. Yeah. <laughs> shit, you ain't even thinking like that. Motherfuckers ain't thinking about pulling their money together, pulling all these stimulus checks, um, these fucking COVID checks together and actually buying some land or buying a house and then losing that house for all y'all to live in and nutty and all y'all niggas only yeah, all y'all niggas got money in your pocket now. Cause y'all live together type shit. But no one wants to think like that. <laughs> niggas wanna think in no one, some, no one wanna, th- wanna think generation. Yes. They wanna think right here and now and fuck everything else. Fucking hell. And that's how you like for real, cause you don't do shit for the next generation. The next generation is going to figure out the past generations. And, and, and uh, white people think they slick. I see them, some of them say, I stand with black people, but then, like, in they the comments, and then the comments, he's like, well, you know, that, that, it's a white way to protest, though. You don't have to destroy it. I'm like, hold on. You think you slick, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Nah, yeah, they can break them fucking buildings. Fuck them. Burn them. And, and yeah, you got to say, just like that, fuck those buildings. The fuck, then? You ain't make the motherfucker. The fuck you worrying about your tax dollars paying the shit? Nigga, get the fuck out of here. You ain't gonna see that shit. I had this white boy he can ask me and talk about, oh, the post isn't wrong. I'm like, he sent me a link of this on um, one black firefighter who has his business burned down. So I asked him, hey, since you're so concerned about that business, are you, are you gonna put money into his uh, account to help him rebuild? He ain't see shit. No. Mm-hmm. Fucking faggot. The fuck out of here, man. Ain't nobody, man. Ain't nobody for real about fucking these. Get, man, get the fuck out of here. I'm talking about some fucking man, y'all just doing. I, I, I saw this one post on Facebook. This girl was like, "Man, you could have hit one of my coworkers. The, the the fucking place was closed at that time. <laughs> you could have hit one of my coworkers. You destroyed my my, my place of employment. Bitch, what? Got no job. The fuck out of here. That's no. That should be a whole. That should be a suck of the. That should be. That, a, that's not. That's. I'm a, sorry. That should be a new door opening for you to say, "Fuck that job. I'm going to rely on myself and build a whole new economy for myself." It's a work, it's a bunny, somebody else's comedy. But nah, y'all won't be, y'all won't be on the white people. Y'all be on the somebody else. Because y'all fucking lazy don't want to do, do the work. COVID got niggas saying, please, I want to go back to work. Who the fuck begs to go back to work? You got free time. Yeah, you can't pay your bills. But you got your COVID check. Now, hopefully you, if you were smart, you've been saving your money. Yeah. You, you would be set. You would be like, oh shit, now I can fucking finally fill some application, get an actual job where I actually want to do. Y'all, y'all can use this employment money, un- unemployment money y'all getting. Yeah, that too, because they half of it. I'm hearing motherfuckers get 800 a week, nigga. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I go, like, I'm getting 700, but I not spend like, most of my unemployment money. I guess the less shit stack up. That, that's fucking up. I don't nice. know when like, that's going to happen again. So most people don't get paid that. That's, yeah. that's stripper money, nigga. I can mean, stripper make more than that. But that's damn near stripper money. Get the fuck out of here. Motherfuckers, boy. And you still broke? Man, you better kill yourself. You guys are getting free money for the gun, man, and y'all wasting it on bullshit. Man, straight up, motherfuckers. I'm seeing niggas with TVs every week. TVs, weed, and drugs, nigga. I'm like, okay, when this shit f- over, because it will be over, either the uh, America will burn, and, <laughs> and this is the end of the Swirling Nerd Podcast, <laughs> or the shit gonna rise back up, and there gonna be a lot of more, um, Broken rich motherfuckers. Cause that's what all it is. This COVID shit just making niggas more broke. So y'all dumb motherfuckers gonna sit here and fucking off y'all fucking unemployment and COVID chicks. You gonna be looking real dumb. I'm telling you. Cause you're like, oh shit. Cause they're gonna originally drop the price down and you're gonna be making no 800 a goddamn week. They're gonna, it's gonna be 150. <laughs> One week I'm like, yeah, he gonna fucking be <laughs> asking for all type of shit. And like, I got, I got you next week, got you next week. And then you're gonna see that next week. week. An unemployment check gonna be 150. Like, oh shit. I took a thousand dollars worth the shit out. <laughs> oh my god! I don't like you guys. Like, the government I'm, gonna set you dumb asses up. Watch. Like I've been buying. Like you guys have been finding my face. So I've been buying old school games with my eight hundred dollars plus unemployment games. I mean unemployment checks because I know that those games in the future are gonna be worth ten times as much as I spend on them. Yeah, Nintendo doesn't uh, drop their prices in games. Yeah, like never raise a good crisis. 
Because mm-hmm. crisis is when you get, you become rich Shit. or poor. People, people that's right now. Shit, eBay is popping right now because of fucking everybody out of work, so they gotta sell all their fucking uh, knickknacks. Like yeah. like like right now, if if Yuki uh, if this happens again, Yuki if he had to, he would sell that set that that shit and he'll make a nice grip <laughs> and he wouldn't be tripping. <laughs> like well, shit, at least at least I can survive for a couple more months. Look yeah. at the, look at this all uh, Arabic guy named Bayou Tamin. He has two videos. 20 rules of money. Will these videos be down in the yes. description below? Yes. 20 rules of money and how to double your money. The one thing that Patrick David Best preached in those two videos is making money during crisis. Buy shit that you know people are selling at low prices so in the future you can sell it at higher prices. All right, these niggas in that ain't fucking they whole garage full of toilet paper. Nigga, when the shit go back up, you're going to have a garage full of toilet paper Put for it. no reason. <laughs> yeah, you can wipe your ass for for three years, but what the fuck? Why? <laughs> like you buying the wrong shit, dude? Fucking toilet paper. Toilet paper. God damn. And, it's the, and the reason why those stores the shelves was empty because the damn stores was like, oh uh, no, the people who give the shit to the stores like we ain't giving it to it until y'all fucking change these rules and uh, the regulations of us shipping shit. Like y'all don't even get that shit. That's why the shelves were empty. It wasn't because people was buying all of it. I mean that too, but it was empty because these niggas wasn't giving they they shipments, <laughs> creating an artificial scarcity. Oh, artificial scarcity. Scarcity. Yeah. Yes, that's what that's what Nintendo does. Um, and y'all niggas don't even get that. It's so much information that you all have to look up, man. For real. And the next thing people need to be doing, because I heard people saying, um, you need to vote, vote, vote. Um, voting, see, voting to change. No, voting didn't change shit. It's niggas throwing shit in the buildings that would change some shit. The fuck? I don't know, goddamn vote. What the fuck? <laughs> y'all, y'all voted it on uh, Lori Lightfoot up in Chicago, and y'all black, y'all black people up there are getting killed by the police in this protest because Lori Lightfoot do not give a fuck about black people. Ain't she a fucking immigrant? Shit, I don't fucking know. I think it's just like either an immigrant or some L B T Q R S A B C D E L G person who is just letting other groups get their come up, but she is letting those other groups chill on black people. It's because we gotta get our economic game up, and that's what we were just talking about just a few seconds ago. Yeah. We gotta get our economic game, game up. up. Stop fucking around with these goddamn bullshit. Stop fucking dumping your seeds into fucking fucking hood rats and you women. Stop fucking letting these dusty niggas nut in you. Fucking God. I ain't saying wear a condom because I don't have hate condoms. <laughs> but we, just pull out. <laughs> just pull out. Or fucking just don't fuck the person, man. Just don't fuck the person. Do it. You can do everything but that shit. I ain't saying in the butt. I'm saying you can do everything but. <laughs> um, do anything but the butt. <laughs> um, but that, that mean, I mean we, we, we probably think of some more shit Throughout the episode But we're going to move on To our Actual Segments <laughs> We usually do topics Like I said We usually do topics um, After our segments And stuff But um, We don't want to go too long Because we can talk about this shit For about five yeah. fucking hours Goddamn. damn um, Where you find it? So we gonna talk about what we've been watching, reading, what we've been up to. Uh, we've been gone for about two goddamn weeks, <laughs> um, but it, it was it was very good. I, I actually appreciated it because shit, I needed a fucking um, a, a relaxer. Um, but I, I guess we can start off with my, the first thing me and Yuki watched um, was seven a.m. Um, uh, Jason Black um, first documentary. Um, it's about um, but it's black economics. That's the true what we just talking about. Black economics is what we need. Ain't no other shit. We need to get our economic game up before we can get anything else up. Fuck um, uh, finding a leader and all that shit. We gotta get our money together. Um, I really like this documentary. Um, a plus, of course, it's an A plus. <laughs> shit. Um, I really like this documentary though. Um, I really like um. Uh, he broke down um, the the baseball stuff. I really like, did like the that. Negro um, league, how the Negro Leagues were pretty much dominating sports mm-hmm. until Jack Robinson decided to go to the right leagues because he wanted to be the only Negro and MLB. MLB. And also, it was a lot of contract finesse in what the white people was doing because they had this uh, official league which you had to be part of, and, and the Negro- you can't play for the Negro Leagues. Yeah, and that's how they sort of got him. Um, but that was very interesting, like, look at it because 
Um, and also, um, I, I give him props because it was a Jewish dude breaking it all down. And I mean, I, I, think, know. I think he was uh, a black Jewish guy. I don't think he was a white Jewish a guy. Black Jewish guy. Yeah. I don't think he was a black Jewish guy. He well, looked. He, he looked. No, he, looked he looked white like a motherfucker. But maybe he was just super light skin. Yeah. I don't, I don't think like, so. Like, I don't think skin. so. I think he was a white dude. Because um, <laughs> uh, he was like a historian He knew all this shit I mean I mean I, mean, I have no problem listening to a white person I listen to of white people who Give me information But um But yeah that was pretty I was just interested to see Like I'm a Jewish white guy Fucking telling us this And that, that was really uh Really I Because I love history I love history I remember um Sitting back Watching them when you can tell And you can like hey, Dude that wasn't even 100 years That was literally 100 years ago People want to act like this Negro League shit was back in the 1800s, 1700s, 1600s and no, shit. Nigga, that was, that was, not like a that was it. this is all this. Like and, and then my mom, because me and you kept pausing and talking, and, and I just started uh, breaking down history. Like, like, do you understand? Like, the 1900s wasn't even that long ago, and we was still lynching. Niggas was still being lynched. It was still still a little bit of low key slavery going on. <laughs> yeah, some people got told slavery was still going on, and they remained slaves into the 1950s. You know, shit and shit. Seventy sometimes, um, like, like fuck. It was so much shit. I was like, goddamn. Like prohibition happened. Both world wars happened. Fucking under um, the Great Depression happened. Um, and doing all this, niggas still was getting fucked over. Like that's just you know um, white America bullshit. Like we was getting fucked over no matter what. Like we we was never set ever. I, I mean, we was set in the sixties, and we fucked it up after that <laughs> because white. Because black man want to fuck white women. There is other factors as well, but um, yeah, ages, uh, evading. This nigga, for the, this nigga for name everything. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just many factors to it. That's all. Uh, it ain't just some white dudes want. Um, not some white dudes. Some black dudes want to fuck some white girls. It's other shit too. It was some other shit with the politicians. They um, they basically had to do something for black people because niggas was in the street going hard and niggas was killing black white folks out during that time. The late sixties, niggas was going really fucking hard and we fucked it up because uh, who was it? Um, I forgot who said it. Uh, about um, we could have had anything. I think it was uh, Claude Anderson. Yeah, he said he actually. I think he said it in um, uh, seven a.m. Yeah, I think he said it in seven a.m. He was like, we could have had anything. We fucking talk about some segregation. <laughs> yeah, he was like, you should have went for ag- aggregation. Mm-hmm. We should have got fucking got pull everybody resources together. Probably go to the white side to t- take their resources. Make sure they don't take our resources. Mm-hmm. Resources and just build upon that shit. But now we're going to be like with the white people trying to prove the point. And we we lost our whole economic game after that. Like, what was the point of having a black school and black hospitals and black anything when, because white, when white people had the better stuff? That's what they thought. Not all of them, but, you know, that was like, that was crazy. But, um, and, and all, you know, even though this better stuff, quote unquote, I mean, quote unquote, they stole from us. Um, not even better stuff, um, because remember, uh, um, and on our earlier podcast episodes, we talked about um, that video that the government sent out to a business owner talking about how to sell to a, to you to a Negro. Yeah, and they basically broke down how these motherfuckers will buy the most expensive shit, and even though just to feel good, just to feel good, like they feel good about buying fucking knickknacks, uh, nigga trinkets, as Tariq Nasheed likes to say. <laughs> For real, they like buying that bullshit. So you can tell them no, you can't get it. They want even more, and um. Yeah, we'll put down the description below. I mean, it's in all older episodes, but I'll put down the description below. Um, but yeah. But then um, uh, it was another segment in the movie that talked about um, Madam C.J. Walker, and that was really good because we actually get to hear from an actual person who's related to it. That's yeah, her, uh, that's great, a Netflix movie bull she did. Her uh, great-granddaughter. Um, so that was really good, interesting, just hearing all that. How she used um, her own images. Man, her hair was messed up. And so, there was all her having like this long flowing hair, luscious hair, through her products. Like she used her face and her faults and her success to market her brand. Yeah, her her ads are really beautiful design. Man, you can like, actually pull some up. We'll have it on our like, on our Facebook. Her ads are fucking dope. Like our, our um Facebook page on Swarthy Nerd Facebook. Uh, check it out. Like they all that post, like they're poster worthy. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're very old school. I love old school looking stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it looks like, like off Mad Men, how like they saw the old school. Um, older than that, yes. I'm like nine, like 1920s type shit. I like that type shit. Yeah, but yeah, that was around that time, about yeah. 1930s, 40s, because it, it was a time thing. They was doing also with 7 a.m. about like he, how they did the Negro Leagues, then they did the Mam C J Walker, and then they went modern day. That was really cool. Um, but it was that movie was all about just um, niggas need to wake up and get your economic game up for real. Y'all need to get your money straight before you do anything. And I know niggas be saying all the time, I need to get my money right before I get a uh, woman. No, nigga, get your money straight and get the woman. You can do both. If she can't be with you before you got your money straight, <laughs> nigga, why, 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 why would you want a girl who fucking with you after the fact, nigga? You want someone before that. Me. You want someone who know you, know, know you broke, and see you work that, get that shit. Niggas be thinking all backwards. Like, I'm going to get my money straight and then I'm going to get all the hoes. No, you want the hoe before you get your money straight. Like, goddamn, people be thinking wrong like a motherfucker. But, man, that's them. But um, what would you give uh, 7 a.m.? I mean, I, guess, I mean, of course, A+. Plus. Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess we should tell, explain what that clip oh, yeah. was at the beginning. Yeah, that was from Bad Boys. That was an example of, um, of Martin... He's basically like the white people, and Will Smith is the black people, and he he on some on some. I'm trying to turn some shit up. I'm trying to fuck some shit up. Come on, man. Calm down, man. Come on. Think about your karma, man. What the fuck? No, shit. I I want to be haunting this nigga. <laughs> the that, fuck? That's karma. Hey, I'm getting back in the motherfucker. <laughs> Haunt him, cause so. little little as you know, if he doesn't go back to get him. He gonna got go after his kids, his well, you know, not right, but anyone yeah. that's like close to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the mentality everybody need on you. Everybody need to be on that early in the movie Will Smith mentality, wanting to go hard, nigga, fuck everything else. Because uh, later on he does turn good. Because you can't show uh, an alpha male nigga doing some shit like that now. Yeah, and especially you know <laughs> certain spoilers. I, if he would have actually killed this person, that would have been horrible for him. Yeah, whatever. But hey, I would. I mean, hard like car. Say, go yeah. hard or go home, nigga. Shit, fuck. But it. I mean, can we, can we get the spoiler for the movie out? Nah, well, okay. Why, why drop a fucking spoiler in all this? <laughs> um, also, I want to go back to 7 a.m. because uh, I want to tell everybody like, what he meant by 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. So, when Jason Black talked about 7 a.m. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he was ending the documentary ad. He was asking everybody, what time, what did time wake up? And everybody was like, saying like, a variation of like, like 6.30, 5, 7, 6.30. You never heard 9, 8.30, 10. Oh, I know the former... The fish warmer, I forgot his name. Damn it. Claude Anderson? Claude Anderson? Jesus oh. Christ. That's the, he was in a whole goddamn movie. How did you forget Claude Anderson's name? Fucking hell. Yuki, I, I, focus, my I, dude. Focus, focus, man. I, I don't know my mind for it. <laughs> and he talked about, yeah, I wake up, I wake up at 7 a.m., but that's after I go to bed at 4 a.m. Jesus, <laughs> I, I wake up at 5 or 4.30. Yeah, I wake Every up. Every day. Yeah, I wake up between uh, 3 o'clock a.m. Mm-hmm. Two. This thing I trying to outdo me. Well, I wake up at two, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and the ladies I used to wake up at like six o'clock. Uh, damn, nigga, you be uh, you be up. Well, shit, we know we be hitting each other up early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm be watching you know, TV shows. So I can get my games like knock out the base. So I can write no, write my notes down for what I play and shit. Mm-hmm. So give me like, the rest of the day to like cook dinner or mm-hmm. clean my room. This nigga said cook dinner. <laughs> um, Boost her around at seven a.m. You cooking dinner? <laughs> no breakfast, but you know, sometimes like how people use like like a prep. <laughs> nigga prepping meals. With next nigga Japanese for real. <laughs> got his boxes and everything ready. Just gotta warm it up at seven. That's all you gotta do. Like I'm trying. I ain't trying to cook dinner at four o'clock. That's that's my smoking weed time. <laughs> that's my weed time. Uh, um, but yeah, I love seven a.m. Shout out to Jason Black for that. Um, that um. Uh, the next thing I watched was a uh, Snowpiercer. This uh, was is a make of the t- the movie of um, John John Bon Ho, the dude who did Parasite. He made a movie uh, based off this book called per- Snowpiercer, uh, but then I made a TV show. I love Snowpiercer. That movie was like, oh my god, it jumped into my top ten as soon as I saw it. Uh, it's pretty recent too, but this is a TV show. About Snowpiercer. But this time, the main character is not um, Chris Evans. The main character is a black guy. Um, forgot his name. Diggy. Not Diggy. Uh, fuck, I'm about to say Diggy Simmons. That's fucking Russell Simmons' kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the fuck the new name? Uh, Davin. Davin something. I forgot his name. 
But um, he was in that movie, uh, uh, Blind Spotting. Yeah, Blind Spotting. I talked about last year. Oh, I think it was last year or whatever. But yeah, his the black dude with dreads. I was like, okay, so the man, the hero of this um, society is going to be a black man with dreads. That's what's up. Snowpiercer is about um, the world, um, basically global warming happens. And the smartest people in the world, they realize like, shit, the world about to fall and fall apart. Um, I know, we'll shoot some um, ice missiles in the sky to cool down the earth and they'll stop global warming. No. The missiles actually froze over the planet and now everything's like negative below zero type shit. But this rich billionaire dude was smart enough to see before all this shit happened to make a fucking 1,001 car train to circle around the entire world for society to live on. Um... Because he knew, like, these motherfuckers are going to fuck up and I'm going to make a train and make some money off this shit. And only the rich and elite can be on this goddamn train. They start the episode off with basically, uh, I'm just going to talk about the first episode, um, with um, this shit starting and it letting people in um, and, like, all, like, the commoners are stuck behind a gate like, hey, you can't do this to us. You can't just leave us, like, on this fucking planet <laughs> below zero, like, negative, negative type shit. Like, you're going to die. It's, it's about to get worse. It haven't got worse yet. And they're trying to get on the, uh, on the um, train. And a couple, a couple people break the gate down and bust through. And the main character, the black guy with the dreads, and his girlfriend uh, get, get, a, get a chance to get on there. And this lady and... Um, her husband and her son, they're trying to get on her too. Um, the black dude with the dress it was able to save the son, but mm-hmm. the, the soldiers kicked away his parents, so he couldn't save his parents. And um, they basically, with the, at the, well, they was at the tail end of the, of the train. It's 1,001 cars at the, the, the end end. The soldiers basically locked them back there and say, no, no, y'all ain't coming no farther, uh uh-uh. And basically, like, it got about... A couple like 50, maybe 60, 70 people stuck in the back of this one train car. And it time skips three years and they show um, basically they live in the tail of this train. And the the people who own the train, they basically like, we'll give y'all food, but we're going to give y'all this literally this jail, this literally black jail. You can eat this. Uh, in the movie, um, I don't know if it's, it's not really a spoiler, but in the movie, uh, they reveal what they're eating was really just the dead bugs and cockroaches. They all piled together to make like, it to a jail, and that's that's the protein they can eat. <laughs> that's what they eat from off the like off the train. Um, but that's what they eat, and they low key been sterilizing the the tail end. They call them tailies, like they've been sterilizing them by like you you come here, and they like you know sterilize them like, and they push them back in there like yeah, because they don't want to keep breeding because they got you know got to mm-hmm. start feeding more motherfuckers, and they and they, they they talking them down like you know y'all better be honored and be grateful y'all even own this motherfucking train like type shit, but they living like shit. Um, they they ate each other at the first year they was stuck there because they didn't feed them. They literally locked them back there for an entire year. And so they kind of like those uh, soccer kids who got trapped in the uh, my tents and they started eating each other. I don't know what you're talking about. It was uh, this fucked up incident back in the 70s with so this um, soccer team. They crashed into my tents on the plane and they started killing each other, eating each other uh-huh. on some white people shit. Jesus. Uh, well, yeah, they had to eat each other on this one because shit, they can eat. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, but yeah. But the show is not just about some people stuck in them telling anything. So one day, the people, um, because they come in like every day to give an announcement or whatever, and they tell them, we need to talk to you, the dreadhead dude. Like, we need to talk to you. Like, oh, I ain't going up there because every time y'all t- take one of us, yeah, we don't ever come back, or y'all could become back sterile, um, or y'all fucking whisper some shit to the um, the other tailie motherfuckers, like, hey, he, he up there living good, man. Shit, y'all better k- kill him when he come back. They do shit like that. So he's like, I ain't coming with y'all. Like, you gonna come, or we gonna fucking, you know, kill you type shit. So he's like, shit. I'm like, all right, I'll come. He find out that someone's been committing murders on a train. And he started, and he, the funny, the show was funny because he's witty as hell. It's like, man, the end of society, the most richest people in the world, and y'all killing the motherfuckers. <laughs> y'all over slaughtering each other, huh? Y'all call us savages. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all motherfuckers, richest motherfuckers. Y'all think, oh, and he's like, oh, yeah, I guess y'all didn't think y'all needed cops because um, y'all are all rich elites, huh? Because <laughs> someone, like, literally, like, 
dismembered someone's like arms, legs, and shit like that. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, because um, he we found out his past. He used to be a police officer, no, a police detective. And he's like, not I ain't saying he's one of the best, but you know, he's a, a good police 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 detective. And they got the background of all the uh, people who's been on that um, on uh, on the train and shit. So they asked him to basically search, find out who the killer is, and um, but he said, I'm not doing it unless you give my people fucking real food, because how this how they got him. They brought him in, and before they asked for his help, they gave him um, a, a grilled cheese sandwich with, with tomato soup. Now you got to imagine, this dude ain't saw lot sunlight, because he finally saw sunlight. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? Like, eyes like, like burning. Like, 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 damn. It's like blinding. And he saw that grilled cheese. He ain't seen grilled cheese in over three years. He ain't seen food in three years. He probably even longer than that because, you know, the world was frozen over almost. So he probably ain't even saw actual food in a long time either. So he, I say he, he was eating that motherfucker like a savage nigga. He like, God, he, he like, God damn. He like, he like, he, they trying, trying to ask him for help. He's like, man, give me another sandwich. And then I'll keep talking. <laughs> shit. Shit. Now, now some rat shit. He just hungry. Shit. He using that shit. Like, I ain't saying shit until y'all feed me some more because I need another that motherfucker. It was a beautiful grilled cheese, too. I was like, I want a grilled cheese now. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit, good look at this motherfucker. But, um, but yeah, so they asked him for help, man. He's like, I'll help. And. It's a really good show. I love Snowpiercer. I highly recommend watching the movie first and then watching this TV series so you can get a little bit more of the universe before you start it. Um, but it's fucking great. I love fucking Snowpiercer. Um, that's on, on TNT if you have cable. <laughs> um, next thing I watched was Hightown. This is a Stars TV show. Um, it's about um, Cape Town... Yeah, about Cape Town? Yeah, about Cape Town. Cape Town and what? I think it's South Africa. No, not Cape Town. Fucking. No, it's a Cape Town and fucking, um, what was it? Is it Florida? I think, I think it's Florida. Cape Town, Florida. So, people know who I'm talking about whoever lives in this. Cape Town, some shit. Um, um, it's the place where gay people go. It's like all the big gay parties and all that shit. Is it called Cape Town? That, that, that's like Florida because that's. Because that one, um, it, um, it's, they have like a bunch of gay parties. It's like a gay central. It um, might be. It might be Florida, Cape Town, Florida. You mean? You mean? Yeah. Um, Cape Coral. Cape Coral. Cape Coral. No, uh, yeah. It's, uh, because who was that gay? It put, might the gay black politician who got caught up doing some gay shit down Florida. I don't know. Because they, they had a um, gay festival know. down there. Look, look, look up, look up High Town. The TV show. Type in High Town TV show. That's it, Yuki. Don't put nothing else. This nigga put everything else <laughs> but the fucking thing. High Town TV show. Okay. Well, you know, scroll. <laughs> Let's see. What is what what they say? Uh on um, holiday, a national ring. Hold on. At the body wash of sir during a holiday weekend. A national marine uh, fucking glasses. A national marine fisheries officer is caught up in a web of drama as she tries to solve the case on her own. And that's the show. Um hold on. I wanna know the place though. Uh, is it a Wikipedia? Um scroll uh yeah, let's down to check some more. the Wikipedia. Scroll some down. Right there. We got the Wikipedia right They'll here. tell you, uh go to like the uh summary synopsis thing. A yeah, prim- premise. Oh fuck. Um, Hightown, Jackie Cole. Huh, I can't really see. Uh, oh, it's okay. Yeah, P Town. That's what's called. It's P Town. It's uh, in Massachusetts. That's what it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, P Town. Penis Town, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, it's called Cape Town some shit. I, I, I know. I, I know some town. Yeah. I still some town. <laughs> shit. Um. But yeah, but the show is actually pretty good. Um, it's called High Time because it's a lot of drugs and, of course, drugs and gay sex. The main character is very beautiful. Actually, go back and look at the main character. She's actually very, very beautiful. Um, I'm so upset that she's uh, like a gay character in the show, but I, she's still a cool character because she actually has... Is it Monica Raymond? Yeah, let me see. She is cute. Oh yeah, she's cute as hell. Um... Well, I look like a fucking measle. But she acts like a dude. She like she has a alcohol problem. She has one night stands with women. Um, <laughs> it's actually what how she stumbled upon this uh, this murder thing. Um, this girl is trying to get some um, drugs from this guy, 
and the guy just walks up, pops on her head, throws in her trunk. But her friend was in the bushes taking a pee real quick before the, they pulled up. So she saw everything. And her body's ends on, on shore, and the main character that you, we just talked about um, finds the body. But what's, what's so unique about it is she's a marine like cop type shit. So not like an army marine, but like a like Ocean national marine. guard type shit. You know, uh, coastal guard, coast guard type shit. Yeah, which is very interesting, and um, it's a lot of drugs and CD shit. I only watched like the first episode. I ain't watched episode two, nothing like that. Um, but it's a few things that stuck to me, though, in this damn show, though, the first episode. So it's a su- super, super, like, gay area with it. And then there's this dude, um, like, serving drinks in the bar. And he was like, uh, like, like, who is this dude? Um, the main character's like, who is this dude? It's like, oh, that's the old boy cousin. He's sick. He out. And he's taking a replacement. And because she was asking for a drink and dude didn't know how to make that certain type of drink. He's like, this dude, rookie as a motherfucker. So the dude, her friend, um, the main character, her friend, is with her dad. Um, I forgot the dude's name, but I'll just say the white dude and his dad. So when I keep talking, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, they at this bar. And the dude started talking about, he's like, yeah, I had, a, um, I had a suck a dick once. And the dude who making the drinks like, what the fuck? He like, make a look like, what the fuck? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you know, my, 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 my girl, she was in labor and, and my car broke down and it was raining, and like I had, and the dude he said to give me a ride, but I had to suck his dick. So shit, I, I gobbled his fucking dick. And dude, what? like, and that's how dude was looking like, what? He was like, and the whole time he's telling the story, his dad like, oh my god, don't tell this goddamn story, don't don't do this, dude. Oh man, you such a fucking um, not a fact. He was like, man, you such a disappointment. Don't don't tell the story. He's like, man, what? I mean, it was for my girls, for my kid being born. I mean, I'm not scared. I'm sad. I'm confident in my sexuality. Like, you can't comment sexuality you're sucking a dick. That's why I said when I was watching. And you, the dude, the dude was like, uh, he's like, um, like I'm, I'm just joking. Um, no, you don't joke. About and, and he's like, no, nah, I'm just joking. It wasn't raining that night, and everybody started laughing and shit. And dude, looking like, now give me my fucking drink, you homophobe. I'm like, how is he the homophobe? <laughs> you bringing up a goddamn story about how you sucked a dick? It was all made up. He just wanted to fuck with dude because dude was a little weirded out because it is a gay area, bunch of gay dudes in the bar and all that shit. And he told me he the homophobe. Like, nigga. Like, you suck a whole dick. No, he, he didn't suck oh, a he, dick. He, was, he just made a story up to make the dude feel uncomfortable. I'm like, how he a homophobe, though? You talking about sucking dick, dude, and he don't suck dick. How he a homophobe, though? That fucked me up watching that first. That's sort of why I didn't watch episode two, because it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? How is he the homophobe? You talking about sucking a dick, nigga? Fuck out of here. You proud because you sucked a dick. Nigga, get out of here. You better walk your ass to the hospital, and you just missed that baby's birth. <laughs> shit, you got the whole 18 year, forever life of that child, nigga. <laughs> the fuck, nigga? You gonna, what you gonna tell your kid that shit? Gonna be, yeah, baby, when you was born, I sucked a huge cock for you. And <laughs> like, what the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. But that's High Town if y'all wanna watch that. Um, <laughs> you wanna watch people make up stories about sucking dick. Um, but the show is actually really interesting about the mystery and all that shit. Uh, about who killed the it ain't a mystery we saw who did it was a Haitian fat black dude <laughs> who fucking popped her clean in the fucking head and threw her, head, her um, body in the damn trunk of the car um, but it was the whole point why they did it and all that shit I'm um, trying to find out but um, I might watch episode two it, it, I always see it on my goddamn like cute bullshit but um, be it <laughs> that was fucked up um, the next thing I watched was Scoob um, it was uh, the Scooby Doo movie that came out this year, the animated three D one. I'm actually a fan of Scooby Doo. Um, I like Scooby Doo movies. Um, the TV show, like all that shit. I ain't saying I watch like every single one of them, but I, I have no problem if, if if it's on. I'll, I'll watch it. Um, I like the mysteries. Well, it ain't even really a mystery. It's whack kid mysteries. <laughs> but uh, I like you know I like mysteries. I, I'm, I'm a huge mystery detective guy, so I like shit like that. But Scoob. This movie is about, um, basically they miss, they sort of mix 
the live action Scooby Doo first movie and second movie a little bit together. <laughs> it's actually weird they use all that shit, and it's actually a jump off point for the Hanna Barbera universe because they have like a uh, Blue Falcon. He's from like a uh, animated um, Hanna Barbera cartoon, and they so, ha- so see, uh, Space Ghost movie. So uh, it, it, no bullshit. It, 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 I don't know why they didn't do like something like a Space Ghost type of thing. But uh, they had Captain Caveman. They had uh, I forgot the dude. He's the villain in um in uh, Yogi Bear. He's the the dude with the dog. Um, I forgot the fuck dude name. But he he's like the sort of villain of the movie. The uh, Park Ranger? No, that's not the villain. A Yogi Bear? No, it was another dude. It was another dude who was a villain. He had like a dog with him or some shit. I don't remember. He became a villain later on. You Yogi Bear? Not that that's a dude. Yeah. Wait, that was him? The Dastard? Yeah, him. He was in there too. Um, him and that dog. Um, I like the dog. He, yeah, he had a little smirk in his face. I love it. He's great, little man. Troll, little troll I, I love... Um, but the movie is basically about um, how they start Monsters, Inc. But um, Monsters, Inc. Yeah, Monsters Incorporated. Yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, Monsters, Inc. How they start that. And also um, how somehow... Shaggy and Scooby is useless and we don't need them part of our group. That is the dumbest shit ever. I don't understand why they say that about that. The they useless? Never, useless? Yeah, yeah, they never oh. say that in a TV show, though. They never do that in TV show. They never show them being un, like unneeded and unwanted. They always helped out. So that, that was weird, like them doing that to them. And also, um, the most weirdest shit in that movie, though, was um, they had Simon Cowell in the movie. Why? And I watched it with my girl. My girl, like, when he pops, I'm like, what the fuck is Simon Cowell? First of all, the animation is not good. It was good at the beginning as in them as kids. I think they should have stuck it as the main kids. Because it actually was interesting seeing, like, little kids solve mysteries and shit. Mm-hmm. They quickly moved, like, right to the main grown-ups afterwards. But I think you should have stayed on the kids shit. Um, also, uh, I'm going to give you the, the letter grade right now. I'm giving this movie a fucking C. C. I mean, you know, yeah, C, my C minus. That's Simon Cowell God shit. Damn. It was, oh my god! It was, it, it, I was no bullshit. I started off at like, okay, this might be the little, little bill. It went right down to the C. <laughs> that shit is like a C minus C. No bullshit. And I'm not saying don't watch it. It's a kid can probably get get it, get it, get to it, but a kid don't get to it because they get right off the kid shit instantly, and they grown ups again, and it's like, oh, that fucking suck. But um, it's basically. Scoob is re- uh, is is related to some ancient fucking dog from Alexander the Great time, and they need him to unlock a door to save some shit. It's a basic animated bullshit. Um, but I just like seeing Captain Caveman. Um, but it was weird. Um, he's voiced by Tracy Morgan. Uh, I thought that was the weirdest thing ever. His voice was not right for that role. If anybody ever listened to Captain Caveman, is he does not sound like Tracy Morgan. They, they could have picked the actual original voice actor. He's still alive. These old men who do these like the Scooby Doo voice, these niggas still alive and all yeah, that and shit. And like they was on Twitter being like they was pissed off that they got shafted from the role. Oh well they shafted uh the Shaggy. They didn't shaft the person who played Scooby. Scooby voice actor was oh, so the same. Yeah they did Shaggy dirty. And you know who plays Shaggy voice actor is there you know the dude who did the live action. That's the real voice actor oh, of Shaggy. Him? Yeah, he's the he's the husband in um, Good Girls, that TV show we watched. Huh. Um, of the the big breasted blonde redhead <laughs> girl, <laughs> Christina Hendricks. Actually, that's what's so funny is Christina Hendricks is actually in this uh, movie. That's what's so funny. Like, so damn. <laughs> so it's Good Girls Cross um, Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they try to open up this universe because they you they show all these Hanna Barbera characters and then like like what is this? Like that's weird. Um, but that Simon Cow shit, that shit took me way out. I told my girl, like, that's weird. Why Simon Cow? That, like, and I'm, I'm and, and she not getting where I'm coming from. Like, for a kid, Simon Cow is not relevant. For us, it does, because we grew up on, like, Simon American Cow. Idol, all that shit. But not no kid in modern day, and, and they, and the movie starts off with modern day references talking about, like, Harry Potter, and, um, cause, you know, Warner Brothers own Scooby yeah. Doo, so they talk about Harry Potter. They talked about, um, Wonder Woman. They talk about, you know, you know, what Warner Brothers properties. That's another thing I noticed. Like they they using the shit out of their Warner Brothers properties, nigga. They had all type of Warner Brothers shit on her. I was yeah. like, God. free at Warner Brothers space. Warner Brothers people who worked in Warner Brothers like movies and TV shows. Like get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. But the movie was I watch it with a kid. Don't watch it alone. <laughs> well, no, well, you can watch it alone. Just 
be 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 ready. It's not a real Scooby Doo movie because there's no real mystery and you know, all that shit. It's mostly and straight up straight up Jack in that first fucking uh, live action Scooby Doo movie. Like straight up Jack in that shit. That's crazy to me. But um, yeah. The next thing I watched was Love Sick. This is um. Uh, Netflix movie with uh, Issa Rae and fucking Kamel uh, Nanjiani, my boy from um, Silicon Valley. Love Six about these two couples who basically going through a rut and they basically breaking up. And right when they break up, they hit a man with their car and uh, another man hops in their car and say, I'm a cop. And he runs over that man with that car <laughs> three or four times and then runs out of the car and... They run away because people just have like, you know, phones out like, oh, my God, these people hit him with a car. Like, no, we ain't do the shit. So they on the run trying to solve this uh, crime before they go to jail. Um, I'm going to give you a letter right now. This movie is C plus. C plus. Yeah. No. Uh, C minus. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back at it. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm analyzing it on my head. It's a C plus. It's a C plus movie. Um, I I might will get a Gable um a B, but it's just some of the jokes just didn't land. The movie's funny. Um, Issa Rae, what makes that movie though? Issa Rae and Camille, they it's, it was those two actors. Those two actors make that damn movie. And the movie's really short. It's like ninety minutes. It's really fucking short. It's like eighty minutes long. It's like it goes by fast. And they sort of edit out jokes and shit because I noticed jokes from like the commercial was in the movie. Um. I mean, pretty much nothing else you can say about it for real. It's it's funny bits. Um, what was it? Um, I'm trying to think of the joke that he he was doing. Fuck, I cannot remember. It was a joke. He was like, uh, his his girl was like, uh, like yeah, I just want to you know have sex with other dudes. You know, more like multiple dudes. He's like you're talking about a gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, I'm just talking about, you know, being free, you know, having sex with all the dudes. Like, that's a gangbang. That's a gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of an orgy, but okay. <laughs> no, if, if it's just one female and ten guys, it's a good gangbang. But it's nothing much really to say. The movie, it is semi-funny. Um, they have some good little side characters and shit, but overall, it was, it was all right. I mean, it's a good couples movie, so any of you uh, niggas who, um, well, not niggas, any of you nerds who don't have a girlfriend, and it's not for you then. <laughs> it talks about relationships, you know, and getting in fights, you know. If you ain't never went through that, you know, you're gonna be like, this movie sucks. <laughs> Gotta you know, have experience in, through life, you no, know. To, don't no actually have a girlfriend you that's know, not on a computer you, screen. Right. You can't say you dated fucking uh Hitagi. You can't you can't say that. You know. Can't say you dated I dated stuff. her for four years. <laughs> I mean the show was on for four years. What the fuck? <laughs> Motherfuckers. Yeah, she you know she left me last season, but she back in this season. <laughs> no, <laughs> Koyomi did it her, yeah, not you. Nope. You're not Koyomi. You're not as cool as him. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not with that cool assist. You know, he does he's certain a, things to he's his. A, yeah, yeah. He's still a vampire though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next thing I watched was the photograph. This also starred Issa Rae, but also starred Lakeith Stanfield. I told you I guys, I, I really that dude. He's gonna come up, man. That dude's a great actor. But this movie actually was way better. And I get this movie um, a B plus Because it's also about relationships, but it's also about... It's also a black-produced movie by Will Packard. It actually was a beautiful, sweet movie about... The Keith Stanfield is a thir- uh, journalist. And he interviews this guy um, who survived Hurricane Katrina... And he was just talking about the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. But then he saw some photos in his um, house, and he asked him, like, who, who, who made these photos? And like, oh, it's this woman I used to love. And they flash back, and they show this relationship between these, this, this black couple who this dude, he won't, he was, actually, it mirrors perfectly what we we're talking about today. It's this black, it's this couple, and they live in Louisiana. And... She's a uh, an aspiring photographer. She's doing well, and she actually gets a job in New York City. But the hub, but the dude she with, he don't want to move forward. He wants to stay in the same place he at. He don't want to leave Louisiana. He want works the same job, you know. And she like, you don't want to move with me. Like, we can start this new journey together. And he's like, no, nah, I, I like what I do. Her type shit. Um, and also, she leaves as well because she uh, ends up pregnant, but he doesn't know. 
Um, and that's another reason why she wanted to leave too. And not because he was beating and like that. She just wanted better for her life, and he, she saw that he didn't. He just wanted to stay in the same place. So she moved on, but she did come back later on with the kid, and he never asked her if it was his kid or not. He just, you know, I thought she would tell me type of stuff. And um, yeah, I just sort of spoiled the move right there. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler, sorry. <laughs> Spoilers, they would never in love. Um, actually, no. She she loved him. She just she couldn't um she couldn't she couldn't st- stop Damn. her her fucking dreams because this dude didn't want to move forward. And then as soon as that she left, he married some you know some girl. And you know it's like damn, like you moved on two months later type shit. And she found her dude, and the dude raised the kid for her and stuff. And Lakeith Sanfield's whole thing is trying to find out. This lady learned more about it, and he found out that the lady had a daughter, and daughter is uh, Issa Rae, and he um, he also is going through. A, he went through a breakup, and he's going through something. And Issa Rae also um, is not dating anybody, so them two they um, start talking to each other, and it's it's actually it's beautiful. It's actually a romantic, beautiful black love movie. It's I don't know why the fuck Issa did that movie with a fucking Middle Eastern nigga. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's Pakistani, so yeah, he's Middle Eastern. But yeah, like that was weird because like the Love Sick movie I just talked about was a straight up comedy, and this movie was just a straight up black love movie. Like you felt this love in this goddamn movie. Um, very sweet and beautiful, and she also got, got the ultimate task of choosing because um, a Lee Stanfield character he gets the job in London, and she had and he has to you know, she has to choose like shit. Do I? To make the same do I do do I do what my mom did uh, and like say you know you no know, move on with him or don't or don't do it and you know not do it so well like like my dad did like my, my dad he move forward so should I not move forward and just stay where I'm at or should I move on with this dude who starting a new path in his life um it's all a choice you know it's, this is just so beautiful I, I I give it a B plus um um all day you know what. Fuck it, I give it an uh, a, a minus. Because it's so beautiful and romantic. It was, it was, it was, it was beautiful and it was beautiful and romantic. It really was. It oh, was he's a, oh, he's it, a romantic. It, it wasn't no, no, it was just, it's good to see not no negative bullshit on TV with like black folks, man. It was good That's to see true. two black people who like want to be with each other. It wasn't no, it wasn't no bullshit like, oh, the, it was a white girl he dated. And, and it was, it was no, it was no, it was no bullshit. It was no bullshit in this movie. It was no fuckery. I saw no fuckery. I'm telling y'all, and I look at shit like the, for this. Ain't no fucker in this fucking movie. And the last thing. I um, got a PS Vita. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I got a PS Vita. Always wanted a PS Vita. Y'all just don't know. I love um, Sony shit. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a Sony fanboy, but I like Sony yes. shit. Uh, and I also wanted a Vita because um, I love my PSP, but I had to sell it at the time because I was a poor bastard. Uh, <laughs> and had to fucking... Um, fucking Whatever I need to buy, I need to buy something. Um, but uh, I never forget they fucking play my, you know, PSPs cost like a hundred plus dollars. They only gave me fifty for the GameStop. I was pissed. Like, nah, man. Typical uh, GameStop. I fucking take it. Jesus, I need that fifty. <laughs> well, now I know better. Never sell your fucking consoles. Never sell any of your games. If you got anything physical? Keep that shit. As long as it's broke, then gank a pawn shop. Pawn a PS. Four with a broken lid. <laughs> uh, no, just break it. Uh, it, it, it uh, uh, again, a uh, system that you know you put a. You remember my OPS, my PlayStation had a put pressure on it. Yeah. You could have sold it to a pawn shop. <laughs> just, just press on it for a second. And, <laughs> all right, now press play. <laughs> all right, that'll be three hundred dollars. Thank you. I'll be, I'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I got a PS Vita. Um, fun fact. PS Vitas, we talked about it in our virtual video, no, in our the, our state of video game episode, um, or it could be the retro game one. But um, a PSP is region free, so you can buy a PSP from anywhere, um, from Japan preferably because that's where it come from, and that's the only place where they still I think still make it. I think they probably discontinued too. I know they discontinued in RS in twenty nineteen, 
and it probably did it for them there. But that's why I got mine. Um, I, I, and actually, I, I spent uh, uh, a legit price. I spent one sixty on it. Just off the simple fact is, I didn't trust anything on eBay. Everybody kept saying, um, uh, "Use this, use this." And the Japanese people was like, "This is n- this is near mint condition." Like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get that because <laughs> I'm never gonna fucking hang on. I'm uh, this some shit gonna last me forever. I, I bought me an extra battery just in case the battery uh, breaks on me. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm set. <laughs> shit on this motherfucker <laughs> lasting for a long time. Um and um, but on my PS Vita, um, I've been playing um Persona, the original Persona. They they remade it for the PSP. Um, this game is amazing. Um, I'm, right now I'm still playing Persona Five Royal, which uh, that's fucking amazing too. I'm just Persona overboard. My dumb ass was trying to buy a fucking Jack Frost plush this morning, <laughs> <laughs> but it was charging too much. I was like, fuck that. And I spend uh, it was charging like uh, twenty five bucks, but fifteen shipping. I'm like, but it's coming from Japan. I'm like, nigga, you better put that shit within the damn price. Fuck, I, I, I had to negotiate with him. Like, hey, I, I'll give you fifteen. <laughs> 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 Fuck, and then I'll pay the other fifteen for the shipping. But nigga, I ain't gonna give you fucking <laughs> extra money for nothing. Um, he ain't respond back yet. <laughs> but um, he's mad. So he's like, "Goofy American, I'm not <laughs> fucking Jack American. Frost. I'm black. You better give it to me." <laughs> but um, Persona the original is about um these kids. They're in a gym and they're trying to play this Persona game. And they pull off planet, and they all pass out. They wake up in the damn middle of the, the medical place in their school, um, and they're like, "What the fuck happened?" Like, yeah, we don't fucking know. And this one girl named Maki's been knocked out for a long time. Uh, actually, I love that character. She's fucking uh, crazy. Uh, actually, a beautifully character design. I like. I like how she looked. Like, yeah, I, a, I, I like. I like Maki. I really do. I like old school Persona fans. Like, love Maki. Yeah, yeah. She's I love cute. It. She's really, really cute. But um. But then they find out like the whole town is blocked off and they can't leave and there's demons everywhere and they got to use these personas to fight these demons to figure out a way how to get the fuck out of here and find the origins of why this shit is going on. I am, I think like 30 hours into the game. Um, it's fun, but it's none. If you play Persona 3, 4, or 5, it's nothing like that shit. I swear to God, it's not. You ain't gonna get no extra turns, no flashy shit. It ain't none of that shit. It's just some basic. Old school shit. RPG shit. RPG shit. And they do the most bullshitty ass moves ever. Like that ambush you and literally instant, instant met death you or fucking instant mute you or instant silence you or instant freeze you. And then, and then they do a secondary attack and get you. Like it's fucked up. Like you can get caught up. You can, you can get caught up easily and it's no joke. Like, I sort of don't like that about the game. Like that's bullshit. That's a little cheap bullshit. But um, it's it's a real shim gum. It's a real we got into the game. I'm looking Persona. for Persona. That's why I like Persona. <laughs> Persona on three, four, and five. That's fucking my shit. But uh, I really like Persona One. The music is fucking incredible. I love it. Um, uh, but I love all the language and legal, so that's pretty fun. And of course, I'm using a guide because I I seem like every Persona game I got to use a guide. <laughs> <laughs> They give niggas fucking days and choices. I don't got time to be be, be, be replaying video games over and over and over unless you Yuki who play Three Houses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I like it. Um, I recommend everybody get a PS Vita. Um, once again, it is region free. Don't be scared to fucking get one from Japan. You don't have to spend what I spent, but uh, try to get the original model, the OLED screen. But uh, because the screen's way really beautiful. But if you want to go slim, go slim. A lot of people say that shit feel cheap and used, cheap and shit, and and does come with internal memory because the original OLED don't. So uh, happily, this dude had a fucking memory card, and I was like, because I was looking at memory cards, like fucking god, like for how much? How much are memory cards? Man, for just the eight gig is twenty five dollars. God damn! For fucking sixteen gigs, it's over thirty to forty dollars. Um, you go to thirty two, it's like fifty to a hundred. Jesus fucking Christ. Because because PlayStation Vita's got to have they got proprietary um, a memory cards, so you can't use like motherfucking um, sand disk or none of that bullshit. You gotta buy a PS Vita memory card, and I didn't want to wait because China they got they got it for the low low, but you gotta wait a fucking a, a million years to get it. <laughs> I'm like, and I was actually shocked I got the Vita so fast. Dude, ship that shit fast. <laughs> I'm like fuck, I got that shit from Japan like in a week. I'm like fuck. 
I just like, and I got the box and everything. That's another reason why it cost a little bit more because I because it had the box and the, the instruction manual and all that shit. And I want all that shit because <laughs> it got the Japanese shit on there. I can't read Japanese, but I just liked having it. I'm, I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> That's why we swarthy nerds. We just and swarthy means black for anybody who don't know what the fuck swarthy means. A lot of people are like swarthy. What? It means black, man. Black. It's all oh, black. Jesus, because people see like our um. Our uh, Haitian Revolution pictures, they think sword? No, you dumb fucks. You fucking dumbass. <laughs> Swarty, not sword. Swordy. Swordy? <laughs> Swordy dirt? You Jeez. fucking special ears. Special ear kids. Shit. Get out of resource, nigga. <laughs> um, but um, I, I like it. The game's fun. Um, I, I, I'm playing Persona 5, though. I only play the PSP version when I'm like hitting to work or something like that. Um, But yeah, that's all I got. So what about you? All right. So the first thing I did during this two weeks off was <laughs> watch um, Kirby season four. The, the, first, the entire season? No, uh, the first three episodes. Okay. All right. All right. So first episode, Mel's gift. I mean, Mel's offer. Oh, Mel's offer. Yeah. So this season is about their 10th year anniversary. 10th year anniversary? Yeah. 10th year anniversary. Uh, what? And um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Larry's and Charles' 10th anniversary. So they're a restaurant uh, called his uh, Carol and Cheryl. Cheryl, 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 his wife. Yeah. Oh, I thought they said like Carol. Huh? <laughs> okay, Cheryl, Larry's Cheryl. wife. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're chilling at a restaurant, talk about the tenth anniversary coming up. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So this on. season is no, it's about the tenth anniversary and Larry's finished for, for big tits. <laughs> 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 so. They were trying to talk about, you know, the 10th anniversary. And they talk about how they first got married, how Sarah was like, Larry, so are you scared that if you marry me, you can't have sex with anybody else? Mm-hmm. So she's, thinks, she uh, thinks about that and tells him as a present that for the 10th anniversary, mm-hmm. he can have sex with anyone he wants to. Woo! And Larry's like, he's like bucking his eye. He's like, really? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he was thinking about all the girls he wants to fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's Larry, boy. <laughs> so the reason why this episode called Mel's Offer is because um, Mel gets them, not Mel gets them, uh, Mel Brooks yeah. from the producers. Um, legendary, yeah, legendary, 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 legendary. He is trying to get Larry on a reboot of. The producers, yeah, uh, the producers. As With, uh, David Swimmer, not David Swimmer. David Swimmer. Um, it's another. It's, it's like another person with him. Um, uh, Jason Alexander. Yes, yeah, I, I think he used to, he, he he used to do the producers like in real life back mm-hmm. in the day. But sorry, go ahead. But um, he's Larry's is um getting some kind of backlash through Ben Stiller. Oh, Ben Stiller. Yeah, this, this yeah. The, yeah, this is the season where Ben Stiller uh, debuts on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they try yeah, to get yeah, him yeah. on the That's show. That's what we worked on, um, Ben Stiller. Yeah, try to get him on the producers, but... And, and Ben Stiller is playing... Uh, let it be known, any celebrity comes on Kirby Enthusiasm, if they're using their name, they're playing an exaggerated version of themselves. So, so it is Ben Stiller, but it's an exaggerated version of him. What people think who Ben Stiller really is. <laughs> Regardless, sorry. So... Yeah, I forgot what I'm gonna say. Cause Vince Stiller, cause like Vince Stiller was acting like a he, a, he a, a dick, an asshole, and like I'm like, damn, he did it good though. Yeah, good dick. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I think it was cause driving to the um to the to the place. Yeah, they, they, oh, I'm sorry. It hit it. Uh, doing the wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this wheelchair motherfucker was like, man, watch are you going? But at the same time, this wheelchair motherfucker was on the phone, not paying attention to right. playing his bullshit on Larry, who's right. actually was paying attention with his right. fat homeboy. Not Michelle Lewis. Jeff. Jeff. Yo, yo, forget Jeff's name. Yeah, I was forgetting. <laughs> he's my least, he's my least favorite character. That's why I always Jeff, Jeff is fucking great. Like, he's great, but he's not a character I like for uh-huh. real. I like his friend, uh, Richard. Uh, Richard Lewis. Yeah, yeah, he's fucking hilarious. <laughs> he's he be throwing <laughs> shots, nigga, shit. Just like the Johnny Good Guy, but you no, know, he's not with the same so He ain't no damn good guy. He nigga never portrays, <laughs> he never portrays himself as a good guy. To his wife, to yeah. Because <laughs> he got to, his wife fucking a monster. Shit, that nigga, he never know, nigga. <laughs> yeah, to his wife, nigga. That's it. That nigga's a scumbag, nigga. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nigga that's why, that's why she knows his like wife him. like a motherfucker. <laughs> that's why I don't like him. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, he casting couches, girl. What the hell? <laughs> he probably does real life. <laughs> he looked like he looked like a type. Yeah, Fat, shit. sleazy. <laughs> I told you that's for the latest season. They, they call him um, uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> like, I'm not Harvey Weinstein because he had the low, the low cut and yeah. low hair. He like, like you bastard. Um, why do you keep thinking I'm Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait, um, go ahead, sorry. That's a funny. That's a funny scene where um, he goes to somebody's office, not HBO, but man, I forgot who's. He went to the office. So there's a blonde girl out there. Going it's, through, it's probably his office. Yeah, his office. <laughs> going through a uh, list of baby names. Mm-hmm. So they asked me, hey, I see you got some baby names. It's like, you have a baby? Yeah, me and my partner are having a baby. Mm-hmm. And Larry here was just like, you mean, yeah, my, I get, I get, we call her a partner, but I don't call my wife a partner. Like, she's, a, no, she calls like, he calls his wife more of a partner than mm-hmm. her, his secretary, lesbian wife, whatever. Mm hmm. Cause you know how the gay people like call their lovers partners. Mm-hmm. So like it's pretty much soon shot saying so um he asked, you know, where he's getting the, the baby from. And the girl's like, Yeah, we're getting him for China. He said, Where are you getting the baby from? Because <laughs> they're adopting the baby. I know, like, I know. You know what I'm saying? You know, how Larry be saying yeah. shit though. <laughs> so, you know, so it turned out, you know, it's gonna be a Chinese kid. And he's like, Oh yeah, you know, Chinese things are kinda cool. You know, he got Ring, he got Hung, he got Luke Kang. <laughs> How about Tang? Tang. Like Tang? Tang. You know, it's kind of Chinese. You want to name my kid after a beverage? <laughs> <laughs> and like, she, the blonde chick is look at, her, look at him like, dude, what? <laughs> she feels so offended. Like, it's just Larry boy. Like, he was being racist and goes being a jacket, fucking jackass. <laughs> he, so, he ain't a jackass. He just. I mean, that was kind of jackass. He being Larry. You know, that was kind of jackass when calling. <laughs> So I call an Asian kid Tang to get some Chinese name. <laughs> What's a fucking salt drink? How about Tang? Ching <laughs> <laughs> Tang Tong. Uh, that's hilarious, nigga. <laughs> All right, so uh, the next day, uh, Lay goes to the office. He finds a wallet, and he gives a wallet to the guy. I mean, to the same woman who was he was calling his son Chang. Mm-hmm. So as they're talking, this Asian girl came into the uh, office. And she goes starting to he goes looking like like a with a mean look. Mm. So the Asian girls watch him, grass him, grass him, like pushing against the wall. He's like, You wanna call my son Tang? You wanna call my son a breakfast drink? <laughs> everybody, everybody always get aggressive with Larry. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, he was going to be, he was being racist, con- a k- Asian boy. He was just, he was Tang. naming, he was naming Asian names. He's going to make the name, like Mike. Mike. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. That's the most weirdest shit, seeing an Asian with, with, a, with, with an American name. <laughs> <laughs> I had a boss who was Asian, he had an uh, American name too. Like, that's weird. Nick. Your, your, your American name is Paul? Okay, Paul. Paul Wang, okay. <laughs> pa- uh, oh, Paul Hong Song. <laughs> Paul Hong Song Smith. <laughs> Some dumb fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Be too low. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay. I guess this is another story. Uh, so Larry, um, he goes to the ticket piss and he gets hit in the head with the door by um, Mel Brooks and he knocks Larry. Mel, yeah. Mel Brooks knocks out Larry and Larry has a huge gash across his forehead. Mm-hmm. So he has to go to the. Um, Jeff's homeboy's doctor's office to get it to get checked out. So why is Larry's in the uh, waiting room? I mean, the uh, office, the doctor's office. I mean, the doctor's um medical room. He goes because of, he's he is so bored. He's like kicking the wall, like being like a little kid in those uh, rolling chairs, like mm-hmm. rolling back and forth. Mm-hmm. And he goes finally picking the phone and calls uh, uh, Jeff off his. Uh, Cell phone and she was like, "Dude, you can't use a fucking doctor's office phone. That's disrespectful." Mm-hmm. And Lil was like, "Why? I mean, it's it's there. I right, it's it. there. Right, it's there." Yeah. So I asked he's talking shit about the doctor. The doctor walks in and I was like, "Can't use my phone." And Lil's in the you know, being Lil like, "Why? I mean, it's there." I was like, "Can't use it." Like, I was making a local call, and the doctor was like, "I don't care if it's a local or long distance. You can't use a phone." And they asked, you know, why I can't use a phone? And he's like, he like, doctor was like, I can't really go explain it because, you know, it's too long. You check out. So doctors examine Larry's head. Turn like, hey, yeah, this could be a little, this a little prick. And Larry was like, 
Yeah, there is a little prick. Yeah, yeah, he is. He was look, he's looking like right. yeah, looking straight little, in his eyes, like, right. Carla, yeah, there is a little prick. prick. <laughs> and the doctor <laughs> shot back and was like, I think there's only one prick here. <laughs> <laughs> and Lagos, you know, shut up. Yeah. So as on the doctor uh, tried to saw his head back up. I love those on code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there he goes, on code on the end. Like a slice of throat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> so as on Larry's getting his head sewn back together. The doctor saw Julian him. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was the it's most, so disgusting. Oh, my scene. God. I would have beat his ass, dude. I swear to God. That's some fighting shit right Yeah, like, there. this motherfucking doctor has his mouth he's, open. He said, ugh. Did, come out of his did mouth. Did you fucking just drool on me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, no, that, was, that, that would have been ass open right there. That's, That's fucking nasty. Fuck it up. So, uh, this day, the next night, they go see... Um, He's thinking for to give us the whole episode breakdown. Yeah, they go to a theater. <laughs> they met up with um, Ben Stiller. Because mm-hmm. uh, he's doing a performance for something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, as they talking, Ben Stiller uh, sneaks in his hand. And Larry's kind of like, Nikki Rose. Like, mm-hmm. So as they part of it, uh, everybody shakes him with no. Ben Stiller. Huh? Ben Stiller sneezed. Yeah. I did, I said, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> He's, he's in his hand. Okay, I didn't hear that. <laughs> and try to offer like a handshake. And like, I was like, okay. no? No? And everybody looking at him like, why you ain't shake his hand? Like, he's in his hand. All right. It's like, everybody's trying to say, Larry's wrong, but I mean, he has a point. Like, I'm not going to shake your hand. Right, you literally just sneeze, sneeze. Into your hand, not into your sleeves. The fuck? Into your hand like a nasty right boy. I think when, I, it's still, yeah. like, nigga, your hand right here. Yeah, but still, your hand's still getting that backlash right. from the sneeze. Right. So... They're watching a play, and I think this is some like 1920s bullshit play mm-hmm. with the f- Lee female, her breasts are like hanging out, mm-hmm. and Lego's like fixating on her breast, <laughs> thinking, okay, that's gonna be going, I'm gonna fuck <laughs> for how many of her Now, prior to. Like, I'm gonna be working with her? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, prior to, Lady had took some pills to, you know, ease the pain of his head getting split in half. And Cheryl was like, are you sure you want to take those pills? They make you dry. So you're going to be okay. So Lay talks the pills. And during the play, he starts to get dry. And she was like, you sure you're not tired? He's like, I'm, I'm good. So Lay rests his head on the bouncer. As, as he goes to go to sleep, he starts jeweling mm-hmm. on the same guy that joined him mm-hmm. prior to. He looked like, oh. like a fuck. And that ends the episode. That was great. That was funny. Episode. I love. That was fucking great. I love how I love the storyline so far. How um, the story beats are beautiful. Yeah. Like, how? That, like, like like that's what's so great about Curb, and that's the same thing with Seinfeld. There's the story beats are so like, like boom, 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 boom. You can't you can't deny. It. Like as yeah. soon as you brought up the story beat, I'm like, oh yeah. That's yeah. Like, I like watch like like I watch I actually watched this episode like three times to get the story how everything starts to build up towards each episode. Mm-hmm. So in this episode, it's Ben's birthday party. Mm-hmm. So Ben Sutter, for some reason, has a birthday party two weeks, two weeks I, I, after. I his, don't understand. People do this shit too. I'm like, who? Like, see what I mean? You know, I, I told you, I watch tons of TV. Yeah. You know, no one never used that idea? The whole, his birthday two weeks later type shit. No one's never used that as like a joke, as a premise, as a show. Nothing, no one. I'm like, how the fuck he think of this first? But yeah, go ahead. So, well, I got to, so before we get to this party, the episode opens with Larry tap dancing. Mm-hmm. And his instructor just it could be flaming uh-huh. cream, uh-huh. but snapping on Larry is like, no, you, you this wrong. Pay attention. And he starts tapping and say, I've been doing this since uh, I was seven, but the wind is off um, beat. Mm-hmm. And Larry's like, Larry, Larry wants to check this guy, but you know, he got a recommend for this project. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, I can't just do like I was doing. I was like, no, yeah. And the gay dude was like, no, you have to do it like this. He started doing tap dancing. And, uh, uh-huh. I can't tap dance. I'm not a coon. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, as Larry's taking a break, he meets this blind guy who fun fun season three. Mm-hmm. I forgot his name. Was it Nick? I don't know. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him the blind guy. Mm-hmm. So blind guy, he oh come, yeah yeah yeah, the dude who played him and Richard to move all this shit. Yeah. In his house. <laughs> We well, ain't playing, but he kept being extra with yeah. it. Like, I don't like my TV right there. I don't want my TV right there. You're not even going to watch the TV. You're just going to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite quote from this episode is, um, 
um, uh, when he asked Larry asked him something, he's like, I don't know what color, what red looks like. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know what's a comic book. I don't, don't I can't I can't read comics, dude. I'm blind. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you know what red the red cape red. Yeah. I'm like what is red? red. <laughs> like you can't, you can't, you can't talk to a buyer. That was like, good. That was good improvising. Yeah. I love the fucking shit. But go ahead. Sorry. So you know he's he messed up again, but he has a witty ugly woman. I mean, witty ugly girlfriend. Who lied to him? She was a model. So yeah, as, like she's a model. She's like she's a model, and they, they both him, Larry, Larry, Larry and the girl both mugging each other. Like yeah. you lying to you lying to a blind man. <laughs> Fuck scumbag. <up. laughs> right. You lie, you motherfucker. <laughs> he had to tell him the truth. Yeah. So as talking Ben Stiller, uh, Ben Stiller, <laughs> who, who, who was it? Uh, somebody was asking him like, well, why, "Why should he even want a model? Like he's yeah. blind." Like I don't know, <laughs> I don't man, know. but <laughs> he deserves it though. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, sorry, go ahead. So Ben Stiller meets the blind guy, and the blind guy introduces his girlfriend to Ben Stiller, and <laughs> the blind guy's like, "Hands off, she's taken." And Ben, ben Stiller like, like, "I don't want that hoe." <laughs> yeah, Ben Stiller like, look like, "Nigga, I'm Ben Stiller. I can get." Better bitches than what that Hagger power trash is. <laughs> he didn't say that. I'm just, just me, me being an asshole, but he just had that look. Mm-hmm. So they go. So Ben invites him to his birthday party. That's like two weeks after the party, the birthday. And he tells Larry, "Don't bring a gift. No, no gifts. No gifts." And no, Larry was like, "Okay, good, good, good." Like, I don't know, is this that's... also with the uh, the cashew raisins? The cashew raisins. The cashew raisins thing? Maybe that's the next, that's later on. That's, that's later on. Okay. So, Larry and Cheryl go to the party. So, with no gift? No, Cheryl gets no gift, I think. Wow. It's like, so, they see, so they, as soon as they get into the um, house, they see a table full of gifts. Mm-hmm. And Larry's like, like, what the fuck? Fuck. <laughs> and it was like, like well, you bring him a gift? It's like he did. It's like, don't bring no gifts. Sometimes Larry come off as a black dude, like the real shit. Like, man, yeah. what the hell? No, nah, man. <laughs> Go ahead. It was calling Larry, asking he didn't bring no gifts. And no, he did say, you know, don't bring any gifts. Straight up told him, yeah, like don't bring no gifts. And it was like, no, oh no, 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 no. Like, yes, when people say that, I should bring the gifts. Like, is this the Caesar salad episode? No. Okay. It's a, lot, it's a lot of shit happening yeah. between him and Ben Stiller. It's, yeah. whole, it's so much shit in that season with him and Ben Stiller. Like, I, I love the chemistry. Like, you, yeah, t- like, yeah, yeah. you got two assholes just assholes yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause clashing. Yeah, and, and, and the difference is Larry, Larry's out, out there with him. Yeah. Ben Stiller is like, like, like more snotty. Like, he's like, sneaky. Like you, yeah, sneaky. You don't see it. And, and everyone know him as Ben Stiller. Yeah. yeah everybody know Larry as Larry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so... This is a scene where uh, Larry is, is uh, oh, not Larry, but this, you got these kids at the table playing um, telephone. Ah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Susie invites, I fucking love Susie. Susie invites on Larry to play telephone with the kids. So each kid tells, you know, what the last kid say to the next kid. So you see this one kid listening to Larry's error. You know what they're saying. And Larry says, I love tits. No, and, he didn't. No, 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 no. Larry, 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 no, Larry was like, yeah, this kid say, I love tits. And oh, everybody started okay. giggling, oh, laughing. Okay, okay, okay. And Sue's so like, what the fuck, you four eyed perverted freak? <laughs> I love what you snap. <laughs> you can't, why, why are you talking about tits in front of kids? <laughs> and I was like, no, that's what he said. Like, so Sue so asked his one kid, what do you say? What do you say first? Like, I love pigs. And he asked the next kid, I love pigs. And then he asked a kid, that lady's accusing saying, I love tits, saying, no, I say, I love pigs. you like, lying like a motherfucker. Like, <laughs> they're like, ah. Like, really? You did say, I love tits. <sighs> as, as it's going on, Cheryl hears this and sees Larry being a pedophile almost, talking about tits in front of kids. <laughs> Grass is like, you want to sing happy birthday to um, Ben. Mm-hmm. So, all the adults are singing happy birthday to Ben. Except for Larry, because Larry was like, why is he gonna hack a bunch of to another man for? That's gay. Mm-hmm. And Ben Stiller. And plus, he said he don't like the whole birthday song, which I agree. I agree. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's like, stupid. 
why are you singing Happy Birthday? Like, why? Why? Is, saying why? about four or five times in a row, like fucking hell. A group of men singing Happy Birthday to another man. That's fucking gay. <laughs> so late. So Ben still sees that Lay's like singing Happy Birthday, and he gets me mucking. Ben, um, Larry. So this day, um, damn, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Ben confronted him about the whole ha- happy birthday shit. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm fucking joking. I'm missing, I'm missing a whole important part. Mm-hmm. So Ben and, not Ben, I mean. His wife. <coughs> ben and his wife. Not Ben and his wife. Uh, Larry and um, that boy, Jeff. Jeff? Yeah. Give him his name. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like Jeff. <laughs> so Fat boy and Jeff. I mean, fat, I mean Jeff and um, Larry. I'll talk about golfing. Mm-hmm. So Larry, for some reason, has a um one of those um sticks you put meat on, like you put like grilled meat and grill. Uh, um, uh, well, I would say pool cue. Um, a skewer. Just, just, just yes, yeah, spear, shish kebab, whatever. A, a, um, slim a, a stick. Skewer, a, a, a skewer? meat stick. A yeah, skewer. Skewer. It's probably a skewer. Yeah, it's probably what it is. Oh no, I pronounce it. He still got his um. Pointy meat stick. Yeah, he don't know where to put it. He's like, that's right. why I hate eating shit off a stick. I'm like, I don't know where to put the stick. Put so you just put it on the table. Like, no, that's no, I don't do no shit like that. <laughs> like, the, the people pick it up. No. <laughs> Larry just extra sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes Larry to be extra. <laughs> <laughs> so as Larry's um, swing, Jeff had to uh, do a proper golf swing. He hits Ben with the point and the stick. Ah, yeah. And blinded him. Uh-huh. So next day, I'm blind. <laughs> so next day, you see Ben at the rehearsal hall with uh, Larry, and he has an eye patch. He's struggling to dance, get yes. everything down. He can't see his uh, eye. So he asked him, know, why did you not sing Happy Birthday to me? And Larry explains, no, that's kind of awkward. You no, know, why? Happy Birthday to me. You no, know, try to be on P and on Q on that shit. Mm-hmm. And you no, know, Ben, 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 because Ben dick, like, no, that's, that's rude. Mm-hmm. So, Lay uh looks up at uh, the blind guy. And the blind guy tells him, Yeah, I had to break over her, you know, she was bullshitting, she wasn't really a model. Yeah. And like, he was he has his oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh really now. <laughs> so Larry was like, Yeah, let's um we want to hang out and kick it. So they go to the um to like some stores, getting his uh Roger or Grady, which I don't know why he's blind, he can't see his clothes. Mm-hmm. But whatever. <laughs> a blind dude who wants to be normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Or be like Daredevil. Then he got powers because he's blind. Shit, that's funny. <laughs> so, as they're talking, Larry, I mean, um, blind guy invites Larry to a show tune sh- piano board thingy. Mm-hmm. And they go and this dude is singing a whole bunch of show tunes off key. Playing the piano, like doing that, like that goofy whiteboard p- mm-hmm. piano playing where they play the same chords over and over again while singing all key, singing gay ass stage songs. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Larry David loved uh, yeah. show tunes. He loved that shit in real life. Oh, he does? Yeah, he loved that shit. Oh, okay. I, I think that's, was, that's why he's doing the producer stuff. He actually likes stage plays and all that shit. I thought he was doing that because be a good friend. I actually, because he actually liked that shit. He do. He, he loved that shit. Right. And he's an old Jew. Jewish people love those old plays and shit because most of them shit, motherfuckers are Jewish producers. Produce. That's why you got Mel Brooks on the show. Yeah, Mel Brooks. Hell yeah. That's a legendary Jew. <laughs> yeah. The legendary Jew. For real. Spaceballs. <laughs> he did Spaceballs? This nigga don't know who who freaking um be on these shows. That's where yeah he did space balls. I fucking love space balls. Yeah, that's Mel Brooks. Nigga. Oh shit! That's... <laughs> yeah, I am your father's brother's yeah. uh, cousin yeah. nephew. Yeah, he's a, he's the king. I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that was him. Mel Brooks. Yes, oh, look up, Google Mel Brooks, dude. I ain't saying now. I'm saying <laughs> people yep. listening and you. <laughs> yeah, I got. Yeah, I got. I got. I got. I got. Yeah, we did blazing ball. saddles. I love Angus Sound. I got yeah, yeah, man. He did it. I got, I got to buy his own. I got, I got to buy his works on DVDs. Yeah, he don't got many. That's why it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> he, he know when to stop. <laughs> and his brother, he, uh, his brother, his son is Max Brooks, who did the uh, World War Z. Oh, wow, that's him? Yeah. Huh, I didn't know he had a son. Yeah. Huh. yeah he be on a lot of uh, new shit. Yeah, he did the Harlem Hellfighters comic book. Mm. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, so everybody left the ball because you know they can't handle a blind guy singing our key. But mm-hmm. Larry was having a ball because having a good time, mm-hmm. and then it was him and Larry. 
And the last episode is The Blind Date. The Blind Date. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Larry, he's driving around town doing errands for what's the face? Oh, fuck, I've got this one thing back um Ben's birthday party. What, what? Larry, not Larry, uh, Louis, Louis, um, Richard Louis, um, niece. Hmm? His niece. What about it? The girl with the fake tits. You mean his girlfriend? His girlfriend with the fake tits? No, no, uh, like Richard, a, Richard Lewis, um, like the Asian girl? No, it was, no, it was a blonde girl. Okay, um, it was it was a young blonde girl who um. You, you, you explain to me. I, I I'll, I'll catch it. All right, so um, Lay is introduced to this woman who is um Richard's niece, mm-hmm. and she talks about how she wants to get some breast implants because okay, okay, she thinks if she get breast implants, it's gonna help her her own career. Yeah, so. They're talking about, you know, trying to get her into show business and he trying, she's trying to use Larry as a way to get into the industry. Mm-hmm. So, Lewis had set him to the side to you know, try to talk her out of getting into some breast implants. She's not weaning any breast implants. But you know, Larry, he didn't like any breasts. He's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. So, this day, um, that girl goes to her, his house and she's like, you know, you know, you know anything different from me? I say, no, what? And he actually, he actually flashed him. So I said, I got some new, I got some new tits. Mm-hmm. Want to get like a little Hong Kong, like little squishies? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. But, but she's like, grabs her hands Come and make him, him, and make him fill him up. Mm-hmm. So he, as, he's, as he's like filling her up, Cheryl's watching this out from the garden. Uh, and she just had this, this like, I'm going to fucking kill you look. And she's like, so you you did it. You got you got your you got your tenure. And like, no, 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 you cheating. And I, I touched the breast now. <laughs> Shit. They won't wheel. They felt like t- the top of her head. Like, why are you gonna grab her head in? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're gonna mention that if I move on to the yeah, last episode I saw. So uh, the blind dates by um the blind guy. Getting hooked this up. This is a pretty basic episode. Yeah, it was not, not okay. saying it was a horrible. Like it's pretty uh, straight. What it, what it's about? Yeah. So um, they it's a continuation of last episode. Yeah. So um, Lay is one of the errands for his uh, his wife, and while he's in town, he gets he wants out of gas. On top of that, he has to piss really bad. So he starts to like knock on around a few houses until he gets um uh, to this one woman who's like this uh, Arabic woman. And it's full hijab. Hijab. You only see your eyes. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like, and it's the most Middle Eastern ass. Like, I can't, I can't do it. Middle Eastern ass. It's like, oh, are you, are you my new husband? You know, she's like a husband and shit. Mm-hmm. So they hang out. They talk about, you know, wherever. Yeah, she just a good feed. Larry is really good at be- befriending strangers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she, yeah, she kicked back and chill with her. So, like, okay. actually, I got a friend. Yeah. So, he is just the friend to. He's just a blind guy to the um, girl because, you know. He needs he need somebody, and I don't know how she looks, so I can't, <laughs> I can't hate. No, 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 nobody in the world can hate. So, I think you're set with this girl. <laughs> You can my old man, her nigga. <laughs> um, that's the scene where they go to a restaurant and they are eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are having like a little lunch. So while the girl's trying to eat, she gets a bunch of sauce on her uh, hijab. So Larry offers to get her her job clean for her do dry clean. Around the same time. Larry and Cheryl would go to a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Cheryl decides to wear this woman's hijab <laughs> for no fucking reason. Because <laughs> they have a costume. So as the driver, so as the driving to the party, they are they put up next to this um car for douchebag, white douchebags. Mm-hmm. And one of the white boys like, hey, Osama, what the mm-hmm. fuck are you doing here? You fucking terrorist. And Cheryl's like freaking out. <laughs> and they just throw, this, this DJ throws like a fucking bear can at her. Get all bear on her clothes, on the dwarf's clothes. Damn. I mean, that's what she, I mean, what the, that's what she get for wearing her, her job as a costume. <laughs> right. 
Right. Now, like, as a, that shit clean again because like, cause Turd want to be goofy or funny. Try just like, oh, uh, Turd. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I could that day meet up with the tourist girl, not the tourist girl, the um, Middle Eastern girl again with uh, the blind guy. Mm-hmm. So he tried, he, like, he tried to hook up the blind guy with the Middle Eastern girl and they're talking because it's raining and shit. And I mean, the outside the rain, so Leg gets an umbrella and try to uh, cover all three of them. But somehow he gets the pointy end of the umbrella attached to her, the hood of her hijab. Lifts her up and reveals her face. Lacey is like this girl's this girl's face is like horrifying, mm-hmm. and he he can scream like a little bitch, mm-hmm. and grabs the blind guy and the focus went off, <laughs> and he tells him, "Yeah, she was ugly too." <laughs> and that was in the episode. In the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next thing I did, well not did, next thing I watched, well played was Super Mario World. For the Super Nintendo. Okay. So for you guys who don't know, who don't know I recently got a uh, Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Well, it's actually Super Famicom because I want to play some uh, Japanese games that only came to that, that only was released in Japan. So you got the Japanese Super, Super Nintendo. Yeah. So, Super, no Super Mario World. Yeah. You got the Japanese one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. It's the same game. Should have got All Stars. Ah, I should have got All Stars. Well, no, that's Super Nintendo. You say you got a no. You say you got Super Nintendo. Yeah, I got. I got oh, yeah, you should have got All Stars then. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna get All Stars next. Yeah, you should have got that. All right, so Super Mario World is across the uh, fourth. This nigga been not, you been not uh, tell us what Mario is, <laughs> nigga. Come on now, shit. <laughs> nigga know who Super yeah. Mario is. He, he gets high off mushrooms, mushrooms. And, and stops on monsters and turtles, <laughs> and uh, sometimes a flying turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets cooked by a bouncer who's fucking pussy. Yeah, Super Mario World is a classic. That's one, that's literally. That's my favorite Mario, 2D Mario game. Uh, no, three is mine. Three is that's my second favorite game. Oh, three, I love three. Three is three. so fucking much fun. I would say this though: so three does have like more, more of the cooler power ups. Um, I feel yeah. like I feel like Super like Mario World they kind of tone down on the power ups, but they yeah give you like a expansive world to travel. Man, so many worlds. I remember when I um for the first time when I had a Super Nintendo and I played Super Mario World. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna use a guide. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna see if I, how far I can get. Hmm. And I ain't never went this far ever in my entire life, like being a kid. So yeah. I was like. It's so much side shit in that damn game. I'm like, wow. Like, hitting, hitting the levels. I'm like, you're hitting levels within levels. I'm like, damn. Like, secret stars to get you into a secret star road. I'm like, what the hell? It's, boy, so much shit. I made it past. I made it to, like, the um the woods area. Like, it's a wood part. It's way, like, when you go past the bridge and you go mm-hmm. to the, um, you beat that first castle. Uh, I forgot, but it's like the woods part. It's like oh, Sir Wait, I don't know what it's called. I, I, if I see it, I can sh- tell you. But um, I know, I know what you're talking about. I know uh, the music like, for that scene. Like, uh, it's like change different. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, same. Uh, it's like a pathway or mm-hmm. something. How you get through it? Uh, but yeah, I made it like that far, and uh, but yeah, yeah, I love some more war though. Yeah. I, but please don't explain Super Mario World to the, the fans. The fans, this is a swirly nerd podcast. I will hope these nerds know what hell Super Mario World is. If you don't, we'll have a uh, fucking video in the description below of Super for you, Mario for your own uh, ten year olds. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a classic. It's a classic. It, SNS classic. It, shit, it's literally one of the greatest games. Dude, of all time. I, dude, like I had not, I had not played Super Mario World in a long time, so I'm getting killed like every other second trying to yeah, miss them. Yeah, I try sure. playing the old platformers too. I'm like, man, I don't like yeah. platformers. I, I realize I don't like platformers, man. <laughs> like, I don't like Super Mario. I don't like that guy. His 3D games are not fucking fun. Actually, I need to keep back your galaxy. But, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those games ain't fun. Odyssey was all right, but I, I don't like how he moves. Just yeah, they, that's all. I, I'm like, I'm not, I, I like the Paper Mario shit all day, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a good Paper Mario. Right. Paper it's, Mario? It's, it's the superior. Uh, RPGs, Mario's? Yeah. Those are great. I love those, those Mario and Luigi games. Those are fucking awesome. Super Mario RPG. Yes. All that shit is great, but other shit. Yeah, dude. so I'm playing Super Mario World. I say, um, you know, play a few maps mm-hmm. while I'm playing what my main game right now is uh, Fighting One, Three, and Four. Okay. So I got a official copy of uh, FE3 and FE4. And are they named something? Uh, if three is, is uh, missing of uh, the emblem, okay, which is the first half of the game is actually a remake of the first game. That's weird. Yeah, You're like fuck buying that first one. <laughs> yes, um, Dark so Dragon. Techn- so technically, you got three Fire Emblem games then. 
No. If they remade the first one in the second game. Yeah, I got three houses, F E four, F three. This nigga forget every fire emblem game. <laughs> oh shit, this nigga uh told us what he about to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um I played uh, the first half of the game. Well, what's it called? Book one. It's not legit unless you got the PC versions of <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> speaking of PC, you can, like, there's a huge difference between playing a fireman game on actual horror and playing emulated. No, 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 I'm talking about, like, um, they ever release a Fire Emblem for PC? I, no, they never have. They don't know why. I'm just asking. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they release one on PC. Maybe so. Because I know it's a PC version of uh, the original Persona. There is? Yeah. Oh, yeah I it's only in Japan, though. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. That's weird. So, if, yeah, the story of uh, Fire Emblem 1 is um, Marth is trying to reclaim his homeland of Akikina. This nigga for the gifts Fire Emblem, boy. Don't do, don't do this to us. Don't do this to us. So, long story short, he's trying to reclaim his homeland. And, um, he gets his ass whooped. Mm-hmm. Well, damn, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, that's the end. Uh, he, the hero dies. <laughs> yeah, the, he dies. Yeah. Marth dies. <laughs> uh, he dies from all cooking over those city in the game. <laughs> to, uh, to help. With coping with him losing his girlfriend Sheila, who's who's who um cheating on him with um his homeboy Harden. <sighs> and saying, and you know, after that he's just start doing drugs. He just start having like a hard problem. And he just <laughs> fuck his whole life up. Oh, so yeah. after that, I played start playing Fire Emblem Four. Mm-hmm. My favorite. So did you beat it? Four, three, three. I've been in the past through emulation. Are you just playing it? Just yeah, because see, see how how it actually feels on an actual hard. Are you playing on on like RCTV? Uh, no, I'm playing on a big screen, like an actual flat screen, but I got like, um, mm. I got one of those, um, converters, like, it converts, um, I got like a, um, Super Nintendo to HDMI cable thingy. Oh, shit. That's cool. Yeah. That's fucking beautiful, probably. Yeah. It is. You know, take a screen, you know, take a picture and put it on the Facebook page. I shall. There we go. All right. So, um, uh, I'm playing Fire Emblem 4 as my main Fire Emblem game for the, uh, Super Nintendo Fire Emblem games. And, mm-hmm. I can see why people. Well, I can. I can't. I can this. I can't see why people complain about you know how it's like too long. Like, I feel like like Fire Emblem Four. You playing on an actual horror. Mm-hmm. It's one of the games you get. You take your time, but you can't fucking blast through the game. Right, save state, speed yeah. up, speed, all that shit. Yeah. I feel like like how Kaga designed the game. Like you supposed to like take a break after you, ca- you catch you catch a castle mm-hmm. and just walk away for a few a few minutes to like clear your mind mm-hmm. to strategize. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't get all these fucking dumbass kids, news Fireman fans, Fireman fans saying, "Oh, this game, this uh, FE4 is too arcade, is too long." Mm-hmm. But hey, well, you got to read text, Jesus. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's part of the that's that was part of the game, the gameplay of FE4. It, mm-hmm. It's supposed to be like a huge massive war throughout different states and countries. So while you one part, of, while you on one side of the country, a whole lot of shit's going on another side of the country. And that's supposed to sell the, the story of what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I don't get this dumbass kid saying, "Oh, that's game, that's bad game design." Like, no, that's no, it's actually good game design because yes. that's a person gave you tell you how massive war can get, mm-hmm. how why you doing type trying to um, create one conflict in one part of the country, mm-hmm. and another conflict is building up in the other half of the country. Sounds like what's going on right now. Yep. No, you gotta make sure your, your uh, team, your um, your uh, army split, like splits a different fashion, so you can't get like surrounded by the main army force and you guys in your ass whoop. So I'm actually enjoying playing FE five and four on the actual console instead of playing on an emulator because mm-hmm. you know with emulators they can you can man, fast you, forward yeah say stay. And, and also you you start getting sidetracked and you like you know fuck it what else can I download next yeah. well, what can I download next? You, then you got fucking everything downloaded on <laughs> the damn computer and you didn't even start the game that you really really wanted to play on the damn emulator and plus since you're not on an emulator you, you actually have to sit down and think about your moves because right. if you fuck up you got to start the whole map over but thank but thankfully if you for has it so you can say it in return. So just in case you do fuck up, you can go back a turn. Mm-hmm. So I recommend you guys who are like old school Fire Emblem fans, if you truly love Fire Emblem, the old school games, buy the physical copies. I'd love to see uh, what's your thoughts on the GameCube Fire Emblem. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't wait to play those games. I might get that on emulator. Okay. Oh, well, you get, I thought you said you had a GameCube. I do, but the GameCube Fire Emblem is like fucking $200. <laughs> 
because um they were because um they were like producing at the time where Fire Emblem was going to die as a series and they didn't produce as much copies of the game. Kind of um the GameCube Fire Emblem games because like are considered to the fans like the worst Fire Emblem games. Even though now people are changing their opinion saying okay that's that's all probably some of the best Fire Emblem games. It's like they were just in a goofy time for the series. Mm-hmm. I, remember, I remember asking you because I saw a picture of like a, a werewolf or some shit fighting. I'm like, what the fuck is oh, this? Yeah, with the, uh, yeah. I'm like, what type of fire <laughs> ones? They got werewolves and monsters and yeah, shit fighting? Like, fight, fighting like giant hawks. Yeah, some shit. I'm like, what the hell? This is not fire emblem. <laughs> this ain't what I saw before. <laughs> Furry emblem. <laughs> <laughs> and the last game I played from the Nintendo is uh, Silomon S, the fighting game. Se- uh-huh. Silomon S. The fighting game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the title. I yeah. love the fucking. Which is the title is like um, so, like it's like the Japanese title is um, translates to Pretty Social Sailor Moon, All Girl Battle, Outdoor Bra, Outdoor Bra. I love it. It's just super Japanese, super Japanese. Yeah, super Japanese name. I love it. All right, so Sailor Moon fighting game was made by a company called Angel. Who, once their company dissolved, they a, a couple of staff members went to go work for a small company that people don't really know called Arc System Works. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just a small time company. You yeah, know, very they small. Make, very, yeah, very they small. make they some underground games like Blaze Blue, mm-hmm. Guilty Gear, mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z, Fighters, mm-hmm. Persona Four Arena. Mm-hmm. They didn't really do much for the uh, for the game scene. No, <laughs> no, they, no. They, they might be out of business. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so the story of this game is um, the Southern Scouts want to beat Solomon's ass and become the leader. That's <laughs> Seriously, it. yes, that's, that's, that's the story. It. Like uh, uh, you pick yourself, you pick, you pick your favorite Southern Scout, and, and the Southern Scout has a tournament, a fighting tournament mm-hmm. to become the leader of the Southern Scouts. Wow, hey, it's, it's, it's a fighting game, hey? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. So gameplay wise, um. You could tell, like, this, like, our system, like, our system, you could tell, like, this is a blueprint for, like, future arc system so, works. So you have history in your hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that this is, like, this is, like, kind of historic, because, like, like I said, it's a blueprint to how arc system games are now. Like, oh, yeah, that game will cost probably 10000 more, because the fighters really probably had that game mm. cost some shit, because, ooh, this is arc system. Yeah, so, um, you know, and fighting against now, you could like do double jumps or do back dashes. You could cancel like your normal your normal move into like a super yeah, or a special I, move. I know what you're talking about, but I'm not a fighting nerd. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just talking about everybody who knows something. So um, this Silicon game started started that shit, mm-hmm. and for a while, in the fighting game, well, the fighting game community, like watching the Silicon community, this game was was considered a joke because you now why wow, all the Silicon guys fighting each other. Mm-hmm. But as this game kind of grew into called, like in like called psychology, people have sort of discovered like, oh, this game's actually kind of deep. Like you can do like like you can do like certain shit that you see like in modern fighting games. Like you can like um cancel your punch into a bat dash mm-hmm. to play my games with, with people. So throughout the fighting game scene, people are actually playing this in tournaments and making money off of it. Mm-hmm. And so was, we actually have a uh, Sailor Moon S fighting game scene. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I'm going to say it's in Moonbase. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say every Wednesday night they have, uh, have a Sailor Moon S fighting game night. Mm-hmm. And from what I've been told, like, AB, AB pack. Mm-hmm. Like, people are just, just going, going wild of people using their favorite Sailor Scouts to kill, kill each other. You should do the first Swirly Nerd investigation. You should go there. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I might go to God. I actually got no excuse because I do got a game. Since I got the game, I can actually learn how to play at a tournament. Mm-hmm. Oh, what else I can say about this game? Like, all I can say about this game is if you want to learn how anime fighting games are today, you know how they play, play some of them with S. And that's my last thing on my list. Okay. Let's wrap this thing up. Um, but before we end, though, we would like to thank a couple people who subscribed to us on YouTube. Um, King T, Ali M, Terrence Thomas, Brandon Thomas, D. Frank, Boko Dagre, uh, Lamar Clark Gaines, 
My Q Genius, um, Premier Homes, uh, C Man from Cinema Sit Down, hey. uh, the thirteen percent thirteen uh, it's X one one one, Jackson Jordan Shabazz, Brant Barraborn. Oh, she got some new subs. Um, CBP Film, Jeff zero zero six four. Brandon Ferguson, Salem seven two five five one. Um, it was a your YouTube, your YouTube super chat receipt. <laughs> AJ Nash, Stephanie Andre, DeLacy Howard. Thank you for subscribing to us on YouTube. We are truly appreciated. Um, shit, hit us up. At swarthenerd at gmail dot com for any questions and y'all want to talk to us we we had no problem we like we ain't like these other YouTuber or podcasters we actually talk to every person we we at least thank you for fucking with us um, and that's something unique and different we trying to do as well like we actually want to interact with everybody I mean it might get overwhelming when it's over like a thousand people but still man you can handle it probably <laughs> like you do five hundred do fine <laughs> but um. You want to find any of our stuff? I would think you know how to find us because you're on our shit Show now. But <laughs> if you want to find any of our stuff, it's at swarthynerd.com. We're on uh, we're on Facebook. We're on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, Stitcher, Google Play Podcast. Um, we're on YouTube. Um, I'm thinking about making an uh, Instagram. I don't know about it yet, though, because it's another thing we got to handle. I don't, I don't got time for all that. <laughs> I can do the Instagram. Okay. Um, and uh, you can find me at SuperLostFan108 on Twitter. Um, you can find my YouTube channel at TVGoo108. I will upload that uh, Martin uh, video clip, um, the Bad Boys for Life clip on my YouTube channel. Um, I, I noticed something on YouTube. It's not a lot of clips of like stuff. So I'm gonna when I'm watching TV shows and movies, I'm gonna start recording favorite scenes and stuff and uploading onto my channel because I don't give a fuck. Take it. Huh? What are you gonna do to me? <laughs> <laughs> Sue me, Runner Brothers. Shit. Um, and where can they find you? You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash you could the snowman. You can find me on my blog at www dot the snowman. Dot com. You can find me on Twitter at Retouch Yuki. And finally, you can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Yuki the Snowman 314. And we'll see you guys and gals next, next week. week. It's going to be a cutthroat one.